I said Osama or Obama. Uh, Obama, what the is? I've now been in 57 states. There's never been a day in the last four years I've been proud to be his vice president. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm proud of my country. You know, do me a favor. Could you say senator instead of ma'am? Yes, it's sir. just the thing. I worked so hard to get that title. Lord, resist. We much. We must and we will much about that. Be As our nation honors its unbroken line of fallen heroes, and I see many of them in, in the audience here today. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. Speak softly and carry a big stick. I promise you, the president has a big stick. I promise you. If you're a free-thinking individual, you'll love this show. Irreverent, but honest and tastefully tacky somehow. Here comes another hour of insensitivity training with Glenn Woods. So I'm giving myself a degree in insensitivity. I've decided it's the way to go. And I'll be giving myself a few awards, probably a peace prize or something like that. Why not? That's what the left does in order to make themselves look bigger than they really are. I can do that, too. Glenn Woods here. Bold Republic is on the air. And, of course, the phone number, if you want to get in on the action, you know how this works by now. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. That's 307-363-4093. And, of course, pretty much everything that I talk about and a whole lot more, you'll find it on my website, which is boldrepublic.com. Let me ask you a question here. Now, the first time I heard about something like this, I wasn't too suspicious of it, but now I'm getting a little suspicious of it, and I'm tempted to reach over and grab my tin hat, but it's not a tin hat moment, I don't think. All right, some time ago, different Department of Homeland Security, different agencies of the government were buying up a bunch of ammunition. Now, my question there was, why is it such a big deal if police go into somebody's home and find that they own a gun? That should be no big deal and find that the guy has a bunch of ammunition. You know how the press acts. <gasps> he had like 5,000 rounds of ammunition. If you're someone who goes to the firing range on a regular basis to practice, having 5,000 rounds of ammunition is nothing. So Homeland Security and other such agencies buying up all sorts of ammunition, why would that be such a big deal? Shouldn't be such a big deal. They're out there practicing. Okay. Then I come across this story today. Headline, U.S. Postal Service joins Department of Homeland Security, Social Security Administration, and NOAA in ammunition purchases. Hold on a second here. <clears throat> postal Service. The Postal Service. Wait, wait, worse yet, NOAA. Who's NOAA? National Oceanic and Aeronautic Administration. You know, the weather people. The, we the people who watch the weather are buying up a bunch of ammunition. All right, here's the story. U.S. Postal Service is now, wasn't it a bad thing some time ago for a postal employee to have guns because post offices were being shot up and so on? Wasn't it considered a bad thing? All right, but now, of course, we're going to let these people have ammunition. All right, just, just tossing that out there. The U.S. Postal Service is now the latest federal agency to announce its plans to acquire assorted small arms ammunition. To be fair, and I'm reading directly from the story, to be fair, probably acquired ammunition in the past as well as it contains within, and I didn't know this itself, the, uh, th there's an armed version of the Postal Service, the Inspection Service. I guess the idea there is that they're inspecting something that could be uh, dangerous drugs, somebody's mailing something explosive or something, you know, terrorism, things like that. Okay. I would expect that the Postal Service would just call another agency and have agents show up with guns, but okay. But the newly posted solicitation for assorted small arms ammunition comes on the heels of millions upon millions of rounds of ammo purchased by federal agencies. Now, many of these agencies, you got to wonder, like NOAA, why... What does NOAA think is going to happen, that they need all this ammunition? Over the past two years, ammo purchases have contributed to a consumer a buying frenzy. A lot of you guys out there who love to shoot for sport, not just defend your homes, but shoot for sport, know what I'm talking about. I've heard the complaints 
about uh, a shortage of certain kinds of ammunition. I've heard complaints about the price of ammunition is basic supply and demand. There's less out there, the price is higher. I've heard all of this, and this is part of the reason why. August 2012, Business Insider Trading Report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, requested some 46,000 rounds of mostly hollow point ammunition for agents under its auspices. I really would like to know, would somebody please explain to me why does NOAA I'll accept your tin-hatted theories at this point. Why does NOAA need ammunition and some of these other agencies? Now, again, if we were talking law enforcement agencies, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I wouldn't even blink if law enforcement agencies were buying up ammunition like crazy just because, look, they need to get out there in the firing range on a regular basis and practice. That's why I don't care if you had a lot of ammunition in your home. Wouldn't bother me a bit. Levon is in Gillette. Hi, Levon. What you got? Well, I got it figured out with Noah. Okay. The reason that they're getting ammo is because a long time ago, Odin told us that he was going to get rid of the ice giants. Yeah. Well, since since we brought on global warming, we brought back the ice giants, and Noah's right. like, hell no, we're going to take care of this. So small arms fire with hollow point it will yep. take out ice giants. We don't need tanks. Yep. yep. We don't need aircraft. Noah's like, nope, we got it. Okay. Well, I'm glad to know that Noah is out there, and I, I, I would like to picture these meteorologists dressed up sort of like men in black if we're going to go down that way. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thanks yeah, but for, they're on our side, though. <laughs> yeah, thanks. They are. Hey, they're protecting <laughs> us. Thanks. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. That's 307-363-4093. And, of course, pretty much everything I'm talking about and more, you'll find it on my website, which is boldrepublic.com. I'll take your best theory at this point. That was a pretty good theory. I don't mind that. If you think you got one, why do these agencies? So, okay. March 6, 2013, Breitbart News reported that a large portion of the Department of Homeland Security, they purchased about $1.6 billion. That would be a B. Those were 9 millimeter rounds. Now, when I'm looking at something like the Department of Homeland Security, I'm thinking, well, I mean, okay, Department of Homeland Security. Seems to make sense to me. Why? Noah. And I'm sorry, I'm still not buying their explanation for the Postal Service as to the reason why. I'm not buying the Postal Service explanation on this point. I'm sorry, they can call some other agency if they need to call some other agency out there. Okay, let's see if I can get a hold of us. Is this Steve? Yeah. Yeah, you're calling from Devil's Tower. What you got for me? Yeah, I got some personal experience with Noah. Okay. Uh, they also do all the uh, drug busts and stuff on the high seas, and uh, Noah. They also they also do the busts uh, at the border, and uh, Noah does. Uh, I got involved with them uh, when they did the, first started the Mammal Protection Act, and uh, uh, they were the ones that come in with. Uh, six other agencies of the right. federal government uh, to try and classify my ivory, uh, yeah. which was all artwork uh, going through uh, into Canada. Okay, but hang on a second now. NOAA, National Oceanic and Aeronautic Administration? Yeah, these, these, these are like, uh, you know, SWAT teams uh, on the oceans uh, out there at, they're, they cause all kinds of problems with the fisheries. and. Okay. See, I just pictured you know, these guys as a bunch of meteorologists. No, 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 no. These, these are like another uh, SWAT enforcement team for the borders. And the so there's an agency of NOAA that the rest of us didn't know about. Yeah, they get involved in all kinds of stuff. I'll have to look that up. Thank you. Okay, if that's the reason... All right. Thank you, Steve. Steve from Devil's Tower. Appreciate that. Tim in Tampa. Hi, Tim. What do you think? Hey, Glenn. Listen, you're talking about why these government agencies are uh, buying up ammo. They're not just arming the post office and NOAA. Right. Uh, they're arming every government agency. Um, just look at the BLM. They're armed to yeah. the teeth, and they just shot uh, Clive and Bundy's cattle or they hired someone to shoot uh, two of his cattle. 
Now, this is something that got me. I know, first off, we're, I, I want to get into you with why that upset you so much. But first off, let's back up for just a minute. It was pointed out to me during the last week, during the whole Clive and Monday thing. Someone said, did you notice that's a BLM agent and he's wearing camouflage and yeah. he's got a weapon. Body armor and the whole yeah. nine yards. And he's BLM. And I looked at that and thought, what is that government agency doing armed like that? I don't understand. Now, let's get on to the cattle thing. Apparently, some cows were shot on the Bundy Ranch, and yeah, that bothers the hell out of me. Yeah, yeah, that one too. Now, for those who don't know, that whole incident that happened, this is a, a video that's gone viral on YouTube where you see that big truck that they were trying to stop. What happened was those people wanted to see what's inside the truck. They were worried that inside the truck was maybe a bull or some cows that they had shot. Yeah, they uh, they definitely they shot two of the of his prized bulls uh, right. because the, the Bundy Ranch actually posted pictures of it on their Facebook page. Okay. So I mean, this is not like rumor or anything. They're yeah. posting. Look, this is what what happened. How many so, I mean, did if, they? If you think if you think the government's not going to shoot you too, yeah. then you're crazy. This isn't just to shoot cattle or to you know clear coyotes out of the woods. I mean, mm -hmm. they're arming themselves for something. Okay. Now, what the what the Tin Hat conspiracy is, I don't know. Hey, maybe with Noah, uh, maybe they want to uh, protect us from killer storms. I you know. Well, according to that last caller, I don't know if you were able to hear him, but according to that last caller, uh, he says that Noah does more than just watch the weather. There's part of that agency that we've never heard about. Like, for instance, a lot of people think Secret Service does nothing but watch the president. No, Secret Service, they, they do a lot. And that includes go after counterfeit money, things like that. Secret Service well, is. I thought I thought that was the uh, Secret Service. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Secret, Secret Service. Service protects yeah, the no, that's what I'm saying. Secret money. Service protects the president, goes after counterfeiters, and Secret Service does a lot of other things that people don't know about. So the caller just before you was saying that Noah doesn't just watch the weather; they do a lot of other things. I, I would be. Uh, I wonder if they're arming the FCC. And what they oh, would, thank what they you would so need, much. Uh, guns for. Oh, now I'm going to sleep well tonight. I appreciate that. All right, man. Have a good All one. All right. Thanks. That's Tim from Tampa calling in. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. Well, it's possible there's government agencies out there doing things that we didn't know about, but still, let's see. April 8th, 2013, we re I've reported to you here. Let's see. Ammunition manufacturers working 24 hours just to try to keep up with what the government has been purchasing just with what the government has been purchasing some of you folks I don't know if this is true I don't know some folks out there trying to form a theory said well the government's trying to hoard all the ammunition so we can't get a hold of it well then they're gonna have to buy it forever for all time because I mean you know they can put how many big orders in until they run out of big orders I just honestly think that most of the I can understand why certain government agencies would want to stock up on quite a bit of ammunition, but some agencies, I don't see BLM armed. I don't see why the BLM would want to be armed, frankly. Post office, I don't see why the post office would want to be armed, frankly. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me, but if you got an idea, let me know, and I think this is, well, okay, let's, let's go to Bill in Gillette. Hi, Bill, what you got for me? Well, I was just calling to re remind you that when they shut down the, the memorials in Washington and whatnot in the state parks up there at Yellowstone, didn't they combine all the tourists to the um, tourist center or yeah. the lodges up there? Yeah. With armed guards? National Park Service. Yeah. Yeah. Up there okay. when there was a big old brouhaha on national news about they interviewed they uh, blocked the roads and wouldn't let anybody out, in or out of the parks. Yeah, no, I remember that. And that was your National Park Service armed to the teeth for something like right. that. So, okay, you're right. Thanks for calling. I appreciate that. And that's, well, once again, there's a government agency uh, that you would not expect. I don't, I mean, I know some park rangers the, looking at what the park rangers have to do, not just for humans, but they'll come across some animal wildlife from time to time. Park rangers out there will maybe have to carry something. And sometimes park rangers do act like police uh, when they're out there. I mean, whoops, that's the wrong one. Is this Steve here in Campbell County? Steve, you there? 
Hello? Yes, this is Glenn. You're on the air. What you got for me? Yeah. Uh, you're wondering why, everybody's wondering why everybody's getting so armed. If you remember right, he said he was going to have a civilian army that was right. better equipped and better and better uh, trained than our military. Well, then again, and though, we're not talking about that. What I'm talking about... 21. Okay, Steve, what I'm talking about is government agencies that are armed that you wouldn't expect to be armed, like, for example, the post office and NOAA. Right. Okay, well, that's not that's, a civilian army, though, but... If, if they're trying to take, o uh, take over or plan on it mm -hmm. with their power... All right. uh, it, it's a big power grab. All they're wanting to do is 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 uh, get it to where the people they're trying to get our guns and they ain't got that done yet. But they're no. going to have enough of them against us. We oh. better be well prepared. All right. Thanks. That's Stephen Campbell County calling in. Uh, well, I think he was a little off topic, but you get the idea of what he was trying to say anyway. Um, Real Living Magazine, anybody's auto magazine, it is springtime. I've been telling you, boats, RVs, campers, motorcycles, lawnmowers, name your engine. They got it, and they're ready to go. And if you'd like to get listed in this, or if you'd like to pull something out of it, what you do is you call Brian, 605-695-9179, 605-695-9179. Get your stuff listed or find the equipment you need just in time for spring and summer. This is Bruce at Marshall Jewelry and Gillette. While working on radio ads today, gold was just over 1300 an ounce. That makes your scrap gold worth more than you might think. We buy and sell gold coins and bars. We pay 97 to 98% a spot for most gold coins. We also buy and sell silver coins and bars. Sometime back, a client bought a 1,000 ounce silver bar from us. At current silver prices, we're paying $12 for each dollar in U.S. silver minted before 1964. We're located in the Silver Auto Center next to Home Depot. Marshall Jewelry, where she'll love it, guaranteed. So this is the gun my husband gave me. Wow, that's really... Pink. Yeah. I know. Yeah, pink. See the snowmobile out there in my truck? Let me guess. He got a pink helmet to go with that. Yeah, pink. I mean, come on. I may be a girl, but I'm a Wyoming girl. Yeah, it's a really good thing you came to us. Don't like the way something is dressed up? Need it dressed up different for your business? J4F Signs and Stitches. They'll wrap your entire automobile, or maybe that helmet, that yeah, snowmobile is really cool with the right kind of sticker decals on it. They'll also do embroidery and signs and, uh, yeah, they'll even wrap that girly gun. J4F Signs and Stitches, 209 Stock Trail Avenue in Gillette, Wyoming. Wyoming, call 307 217 2027. Yeah, and they can wrap your personal vehicle too car, boat, automobile, van, you name it. J4F Signs and Stitches can do it. When it comes to your insurance needs, Farmer Union Insurance can design an insurance program that is just right for you and your family. Offering preferred auto and SR22s, they also offer ATV and motorcycle insurance. Or, if you are in need of homeowners or renters insurance, they can help you with that as well. For your insurance needs and the security and confidence of a local agent, see Betsy Jones at 1001 South Douglas Highway, Suite 184, or call 682-6520. So where do you go to find an engine mechanic that can fix anything, no matter what it is? Big engines, small engines, foreign, diesel? At Ideal Auto, no job is too big or too small. Open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Local specialists you can trust to solve your engine problems on time and on budget. Come see Johnny, Lynn, and the boys. Ideal Auto, open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. 2901 Dogwood Avenue, Gillette, Wyoming. 686-2259. Foreign, domestic, diesel. Proud supporters of our American troops. Ideal Auto. Yeah, we can fix that too. It's the 18th annual Gillette Friends of the NRA fundraising banquet and auction. April 26th at Camplex Energy Hall, 5 p.m. Tickets, $40 for adults and $30 for kids, 14 and under. Remember, last year they sold out early, so get your tickets early. There'll be dinner, a wall of guns, games, raffles, and auction. Door prize guns, kids 14 and under draw for youth guns. Tickets available at Rocky Mountain Discount Sports, 40 Pond, Gun Traders, Gillette Pond and Gun, TNT Guns and Ammo, or online at Friends of NRA. We'll see you there at the 18th Annual Gillette Friends of the NRA Fundraising Banquet and Auction, April 26th at 5 o'clock, Camplex Energy Hall. A radio show? Yeah. Tip of the iceberg. Check out the YouTube videos. See what Glenn's talking about on Facebook and Twitter. You can find out more at BoldRepublic.com. <laughs>
So back in we dive. Oh, real quick before I get on, I want to finish up this topic here on why these agencies are buying all this ammunition. And I got one more agency that will also kind of blow you away. But hold on a second here. I was cutting a uh, couple of promos, liners, what we call them in the industry here. <clears throat> KVOC is in Casper, Wyoming. That's 12.30 a.m. Casper, Wyoming, KVOC. They'll be uh, starting to carry this show on the 19th of May. I know there's a lot of people who work in this area then go back home to Casper. And in general, just people in Casper listening to the program. So online. So uh, you'll be able to hear at KVOC 12.30 a.m. in Casper starting May 19th. Real happy about that. So one more agency buying up ammunition. And I have to look at it and wonder why this agency... Why would the Department of Agriculture request about 32,000 rounds? Now, when the FBI sought 1 million, I'm sorry, pardon me, 100 million hollow point rounds, that put, uh, well, that, that all had us on edge, okay? Then we find out the U.S. Postal Service is soliciting ammunition on top of this, and we thought, huh? And that started a mind panic, and people began to wonder, are they just trying to buy up all the ammunition? Well, considering that we can just keep making it, they can't buy it forever, you know. Why would the Department of Agriculture need about 32,000 rounds of ammunition? I did not know that anyone from the Department of Agriculture walked around armed. Hey, um, it surprised the hell out of me that the IRS was armed. IRS agents. Now, if somebody were to say, yeah, but you know, IRS agents, they got to go after people and that can be dangerous. So go get the police. So go get the FBI. Why are you guys armed? Or, or just tossing this out there, would you deny any federal employee the right to defend himself? See, I wouldn't. Those of us who like to make sure that we are personally protected and we carry some firearm with us, because we think it's our right as American citizens, I don't particularly care uh, who, even if they work for the government, if they want to carry or not, that doesn't bother me. What kind of gets me though is, well, again, the government kicks open the door of some citizen, goes after their guns, it's happened, then it's reported in the newspaper, this person had 5,000 rounds of ammunition, and the press panics and goes berserk over this. This is why we have to ban guns. And they're so worried about the citizens. But where do you go, other than a radio show like this, where do you go, MSNBC, CBS, CNN, name your news organization, different newspapers, to find a news story where there's all sorts of concern over how much ammunition the post office buys, the Department of Agriculture buys. It never dawns on them? Noah buys. It never dawns on them. Noah's buying ammunition. It doesn't dawn on them that this might be a problem. Where is all of this in the press? So the press, in other words, is concerned if you buy a whole bunch of ammunition, if you have a firearm, but the press is not concerned if any agency of the government carries firearms. Okay, I'm just laying, laying it out for you so you understand where the government's coming from and where the press is coming from. All right, good. Hang in there. I'm going to switch topics in about five minutes. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. With the 2014 elections heating up, politicians are in full politician mode, which basically means they're going to lie, lie, and lie some more. How many times have you heard this? Yeah, today, women make up about half our workforce, but they still make 77 cents for every dollar a man earns. 
Yeah, if you could stop saying misleading things, that would be great. Ah, the gender wage gap statistic. In college, this was beaten to my head. Women make less than men. 77 cents for every man's dollar discrimination. Government must fix this. It's typical politics. On one side, politicians introduce a bill to fix the so-called gender wage gap. They look like such heroes to women, so compassionate. Wow. And on the other side, these people, well, they apparently, you know, hate women. They're sexist. They're misogynist. Cut it out, man. It's time for some real talk. The gender wage gap myth has got to go. Now, yes, on average, men do make more than women. That's on average, though. They find that by taking the median wage of all full-time male workers and the median wage of all female full-time workers, and they compare them. Yes, on average, men do make more than women. What does that tell us? It does tell us that the 77 cent set does not take into account differences in men and women's college majors, occupations, work experience, number of hours worked, life choices, and so on. In other words, it's comparing apples and oranges. If you compare oranges and oranges, men and women who do equal work receive about equal pay. In some cases, women earn more than men in the same job. Does that mean, oh, gender discrimination just doesn't exist? Absolutely not. But there are other factors that play a big role and should be discussed. Let's look at the different career choices that men and women make. The top college degrees for women are education, psychology, and English. High-paying degrees, such as engineering and computer science, are heavily male. Men and women's work patterns tend to differ. On average, women are more likely to take time off from their career, often to raise a family, which leads to gaps in employment history and fewer years of work experience. They're also more likely to work fewer hours a week. Thankfully, women today, we have more choices than ever before when it comes to career and family. Mothers can choose to have a career. They can choose to be a stay-at-home mom. Personally, I applaud that we have these choices, and I believe all women should do whatever the heck they think is best. What I don't applaud is politicians selling women a bunch of garbage that isn't based on facts. Women, we can make our own decision. We don't need no stinking government regulation. Sending your kids out to play. Now hold still. Mommy, I can't breathe. Well, playtime's not what it used to be. Am I supposed to go out and play in my cave the moon? Well, with all the dangers that are out there in the world, like Nerf, <coughs> soccer balls, <coughs> hugs, yeah. and who knows, your kid might come across a five-year-old selling lemonade on their front lawn after school. Now this is for your own safety. Put your helmet on. It's higher all this stuff. Don't take any chances in today's dangerous world. Make sure to bubble wrap your kids before they step out the front door. You need to play anymore. I don't want to go out and play and be play anymore. Don't forget knee pads, shoulder pads, elbow pads, and helmets. Earplugs in case you hear any offensive words. 911 on speed dial on their cell phone. The number of a council just in case they see, hear, feel, smell. Anything that might be considered remotely offensive. Better idea. Just keep them inside. It's far too dangerous out there in the real world. Public is on the radio on a Wednesday. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me. Phone number, if you want to join in, 307-363-4093. That's 307-363-4093. And, of course, pretty much everything I talk about and a whole lot more, you'll find it on my website, which is boldrepublic.com. This is on my reading assignment page today. So the IRS, here's the latest bombshell. May have just gotten worse. New documents show. 
that ex-IRS official Lois Lerner re- inquired about the possibility of the Department of Justice taking action against organizations that, and we'll put in quotes, lied about their public activity, adding another dimension to these conservative groups. Now, um, so you know, those organizations that apparently may have lied only seem to be conservative organizations. She was worried about people who were saying, oh, we want this um, tax-exempt status, but we're not going to actually do anything political here. And then they started donating and spending to, to political campaigns and buying ads and so on. But why only the conservative groups out there? How come not the liberal groups? She never, all right. Well, Lerner, then head of the IRS, tax-exempt organizations division, relayed a conversation she had had with the director of the Department of Elections, which I didn't know that they had, crimes branch. Now, the, talk about agent. In the last half hour, we were talking about agencies that probably shouldn't be arming themselves. How about agencies that just probably shouldn't exist? The Justice Department Elections Crimes Branch. All right. In an email, the chief of staff, then acting IRS Commissioner Steve Miller, no relation, according to documents obtained by the conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch through the Freedom of Information Act. The discussion of the prosecution was prompted by a request from Sheldon Whitehouse, a Democrat of Rhode Island, during the Senate Judiciary Committee. Quoting here, he wanted to know who at the IRS took the Department of Justice folk or talk to them, who could talk about Senator Whitehouse's idea that, in fact, they could probably put together a list of conservative groups and say that they were going to investigate them because they had made a bunch of false statements. Now, if a political or if an organization of any kind had made comments to the IRS saying or, or written in their paperwork that they wanted tax exempt status, but they weren't a political organization, then they became politically active. If that really was the case, that would be legit. But I bring you back to the original point. How come this wasn't happening to liberal groups? They were only looking into conservative groups that they say made these claims. So, quoting here, I think we should do it. Also included criminal investigation, which we can coordinate. And we also need to reach to the Federal Elections Commission. Uh, does it make sense to consider including them or keep them separate? Now, I want to know, we have a Federal Elections Commission, then we have this other group from the Department of Justice here, the Department of Justice Crimes Branch. Here's an idea, just a thought. Yesterday, I spent a good portion of the show talking about the IRS. I'd say most of the show, I talked about the IRS on yesterday's program, and our need to just eliminate them. So imagine if you decided that you were going to get involved, you were going to form a political organization, whatever your beliefs are, your beliefs are what they are, okay? You form your political organizations, you want to buy advertising, you want to go throughout the community knocking on doors, you want to hold rallies. Let me ask you seriously, I'm asking this very seriously now. How is that any of the government's business? No, I mean, really, you should be allowed to just do that. You shouldn't have to go fill out a bunch of government paperwork and then have several divisions of the government who are in IRS and two crimes division keeping an eye on you to make sure that everything you're doing is legal. And by the way, every year they're changing the election laws. So how do you know if what you're doing is legal or not? anymore. There's so many rules and regulations you have to follow. How about it's just none of their business? If you want to be politically active, you can be. And and by the way, just for the record, I reject the whole argument. If you got rich and you have a bunch of money and you want to go support some guy's campaign, and let's say you want to dump a million dollars into the campaign of somebody who's running for governor of your state, go ahead. It I can't tell you how many times I've seen people spend a lot of money to try to get elected or try to get someone elected, and it doesn't work. No matter how much money you spend, the guy's not going to get elected. The fallacy is 
he who spends the most money gets elected to office. That has been proven wrong so many times. The idea, we need to take the money out of politics. Really? Take the money out of, I mean, I mean, running a political campaign, you're going to take the money out of it. Well, if that's the case, then nobody will be able to run. Nobody. Old Republic. Here at Don's Supermarket, we do all we can to make your grocery shopping experience perfect. We make sure that the third wheel on our shopping cart fell just so. Up aisle two is Luann with all the latest gossip. She knows everything that's going on around town and she can't wait to tell you. you. Know what Sally's we hired a guy from the meat market named Sam. I mean, of course we did. Meat? Sam? Come on. Our cashiers are the sweetest girls you've ever met. Fast at the register, and even faster when someone pulls up to the 10-item express line with 50 items. And on aisle three, there's the 300-pound man wearing a Batman costume. I'm Batman. Why? Well, I mean, why not? Add to that our fresh fruit, weekly specials on what your family likes to eat, and you get the best family-friendly shopping experience a grocery store can provide in prices you can afford. Don's Supermarket, 1501 West 2nd Street, Gillette, across from Value Villa. Hello, this is Jeremiah Clapper, pastor of Living Rock Church in Gillette. As you think about your plans and priorities for 2014, let me encourage you to consider your relationship with God. God says in Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. At Living Rock Church, we have many opportunities for you to seek and find God. Please join us for one of our two worship services, Sundays at 9 or 1045. You can also find us at livingrockgillette.com or call us at 307-670-1518. Howdy, folks. This is Swede from Swede Specialty here in Gillette, and I'm here today with Mr. Wimpy. Mr. Wimpy, have you ever tried a home-brewed beer? Oh, no. I only like Wimpy beer. Would you like to try a home-brewed beer, Mr. Wimpy? Well, okay, but just a sip. It looks kind of dark. Just close your eyes and try it. Well, Mr. Wimpy, what do you think of homebrew? Now that's real beer, Pilgrim. But give Swede a call, 307-686-0588, or go to SwedeSpecialties.com. It's a luau, and there is no need to travel. Join Holy Trinity Episcopal Church at their luau fundraising dinner Saturday, May 31st at Camplex Energy Hall. Dinner is served at 6, and the raffle drawing begins at 7. Ticket admits 2, and the grand prize drawing is $7,000. Second prize is $3,000, and third prize is $2,000. Only 400 tickets will be sold, so please call 682-4296 for details. Holy Trinity Episcopal Church, serving the Gillette community since 1910. Spring planting season is now here. Forest Feed and Ranch Supply has grass seeds. The low maintenance mix is a blend of rye and bluegrass and more. It's a mixture requiring less water and makes a very nice lawn. Fars also has the expensive lawn that is a blend of premium bluegrass that is for the showcase lawn. That lawn will need a little more water and care, but it's well worth it. Fars Feed and Ranch Supply, serving Campbell County for 37 years. Fars Feed and Ranch Supply, 100 South Burma Avenue, Gillette, Wyoming, 307. 307- Seven six eight two nine five zero one. Hey, Marsh, you know, Hey, what's wrong with that human down there? Here goes another one. But well, that's spring fever, Stanley. Spring fever. All winter time long, humans are stuck inside. Gotta drive them crazy. So this time of year, they finally get to get out. They stop by Rocky Mountain Discount Sports and pick up everything they need to head out into the great outdoors. Tent stoves, backpacks, and hammocks. They even got shirts and pants, fishing supplies, and uh, hunting supplies. But what did humans do before there was Rocky Mountain Discount Sports? They were living in our cave and wearing our ancestors as clothing. Oh, that's not good. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports has everything you need to shake off that spring fever. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports, 4706 South Douglas Highway in Gillette, Wyoming. Open Monday through Saturday, 8 to 9 o'clock. Sunday, 9 to 6. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports. Uh Uh-oh. Stampede. Let's face it, advertising is hard and expensive. Very expensive. But not with us. You need to advertise. The Powder River Letterbuck Trading Post is a new way of marketing in the Powder River area. Customers log into our website, letterbucktradingpost.com, and buy your products. We pay for the cost of marketing. We provide a signed coupon or gift certificate for the product or service, and we will send people into your store. We sell your products or services for you while at the same time sending 
and then pretends to customers your way. Each sale we make brings advertising credit for your business. Each sale gives you a credit towards advertising. Spend those credits wherever you want. Newspaper, Christian newspaper, magazine, syndicated radio show, or coming soon, local radio. Now you can afford to advertise. Find out more at letterbuttradingpost.com or stop by our office at 1001 South Douglas Highway, Suite B6, Gillette, Wyoming. You can also call us at 307-670-8980. for hearing from you. L-E-T-E-R, buckradingpost.com. Remember that one time when the president made that one good decision about that one thing and everyone in Congress cast their well-informed vote in agreement and the nation was better for it? Remember? Remember? I'm sure it must have happened once. Anyway, let's get back to the show. Here's Glenn Woods. All right. Uh, I am going to connect the dots here on government intimidation with the next story that I have coming up here. So between government agencies buying ammunition that you never thought would buy ammunition and the IRS and other forms of intimidation out there. Before I got pause for just a second here. We just ran a commercial for Swede Specialties. Now, Swede comes into the station from time to time. For those of you who want to make homemade wine and beer, that's what that's what he does. Sells olive oil, stuff like that. So, Nick DeLotte, owner of the Campbell County Observer. There's your little plug there, Nick. You're welcome. Cha-ching. Uh, asked, hey, uh, you know Swede's home? And he wanted to give Swede a call. And he picks up the telephone and dials the number and just busts out laughing because he got their answering machine. So he comes back here to the studios with me, and we decide that we're just going to go ahead and record Swede's answering machine message. you got to hear this. Here we go. Hello, yeah, man, for sure. This is Swede and Susie and Susie's trophies. We can't come to the phone right now, but if you need your name and your number, yeah, we call you back. Well, you have a good day, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, you know, I am going to save that, and I'm going to play that anytime I ever want to pick on Swede, which will be often, by the way. So, okay. If you'd like to hear that message yourself, all right, here's uh, – and I would suggest you you, you go ahead and order some um, beer-making kits and things like that. Uh, well, you, know, you can just go ahead and get a hold of Swede Specialties. He's got a website up, too. That's how. Okay, so um, there's subtle threats out there. Oh, by the way, when the whole Bundy Ranch thing came to its sort of end, it's not quite over, you know the BLM left a big mess behind, as Tim pointed out, dead animals that they killed. But what about this? That doesn't include other subtle threats. Well, the Obama administration has been raising grazing fees and putting pressure on permit holders to transfer their water rights on a condition of renewal in case you didn't know about that. Ryan Yates, director of the Congressional Relations for the American Farm Bureau, uh, has been talking about this. Quoting here, some have called it a culture of intimidation by the Obama administration, Yates said. It's issue after issue, threat after threat. It's become harder and harder to keep those who are in business in business. The atmosphere is quite tense and was at the Bundy Ranch that was tense enough, but a lot of you folks out there who are just trying to do business, a BLM spokesman said the agency would work to resolve the dispute administratively and judiciously with the Bundy Ranch. But what about this culture of intimidation between the IRS, the BLM, other government agencies? Hang on, we'll get into that next. I run a little local newspaper that I happen to own in a small town. I have to do it pretty much all by myself. I do have some employees that do a wonderful job, but advertising, sales, PR, reporting, photography, book work, sure, I would love 
to hire some people to help me. But government taxes, rules, regulation, they all get in the way. Make it impossible. Hi, my name is Chris. I sell and install flooring. I'm proud to say I own my own company. I should be on the floor right now selling to my customers. But instead, I'm back here in this little hole I call my office trying to catch up on paperwork. I was actually able to make a lot more money when I could run my company. Thanks, big government. Because of you, my life sucks more and more every day. All I want to do is replace my washing machine. But thanks to the EPA, my choices are limited to energy efficient models that don't work worth a damn. Thanks, big government. My life didn't suck enough. Hi, I'm Alex, and this is my wife, Martha. And we're both approaching the big 6-0. And we have health care issues to deal with. I take blood pressure medication. And Levitra. Yes, and Martha's got beta blockers and something for her osteoporosis. It's not cheap. But fortunately, we don't have to pay for it. No, you do. That's right. You young people are paying for our drugs and our doctors. Not to mention our Social Security and our Medicare when we retire to Boca. And you know why? Because you don't vote. And we do. That's right. Hope you enjoy that Burning Guy Festival. Come on, Martha. Let's go find that Levitra. Oh, Alex. <laughs> the Affordable Care Act. Next time, maybe pick up a newspaper. Remember that one time when the president made that one good decision about that one thing and everyone in Congress cast their well-informed vote in agreement and the nation was better for it? Remember? Remember? I'm sure it must have happened once. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the show. Here's Glenn Woods. Seven minutes of this hour. My name is Glenn Woods. This is Bold Republic. It's on the radio. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. That's 307-363-4093. For those watching on video right now, which, by the way, if you've never done that, go to boldrepublic.com. I don't care if you got a fancy new style cell phone, tablet, tower, whatever the case is. You can watch the program now or later, okay, because there's also video cameras. Look at your screens right now. Uh, Nick DeLot, Campbell County Observer. Apparently, this has been floating around the Nick DeLot family, and this would be the DeLot family reunion uh, that I'm about to show you here. Watch your eyes. I'm so, okay. I, I definitely see Nick's sister in there somewhere. Okay, that would be the Nick DeLot family reunion, and when he sent me that photograph, I had to ask him, why would you ever in your wildest imagination want to send me something like this other than to cause me to get a brain tumor? The Lot family. Okay, that's uh, all right. So I was talking about a culture of intimidation. Many federal agencies, example of hostile behavior from different federal agencies, prompted an October 29th oversight hearing by the House Natural Resources Subcommittee. Title was Threats, Intimidation, and Bullying by Federal Land Management Agencies. Now, in this case, they were just talking about land management agencies. But how many agencies have I brought up to you? And we can talk about the BLM, the Interior Department. Okay, but what about other agencies? Those of you who have to deal with things like OSHA, those of you who have to deal with, of course, the EPA, the IRS. How many government agencies are actually out there to help you? And how many government agencies are out there to bully you? And is it just me? Maybe it's just me. You tell me. Because it seems to me more and more government agencies have gotten into the business of bullying the American people rather than helping the American people. Now, we can talk about the federal level. Let's talk about the local level for a minute. You hear me go absolutely ballistic 
when some little girl in some small town in America wants to put a card table in her front lawn and sell lemonade and the police show up and say, no, you can't do that because you didn't get a business permit. That's actually happened many times in America. Somebody goes to plant a garden in their yard, and the and this happened down in Miami. Guy, a, a, a couple goes to plant a garden in their yard. You're allowed to have this kind of flowers and those kind of plants, but you're not allowed to plant vegetables. And they threaten to put a lien on the couple's house. Does this sound like a government? That's, and they tell us that we have, you know, the government tells us we have your best interest in mind. We're here to help you. Does it sound like they're helping or does it sound like they're bullying? Clive and Bundy, we we're talking about him last week and earlier this week. His family flat out said that when the BLM first showed up, they didn't have a problem working with the BLM because the BLM was working to help them. The Bureau of Land Management at first wanted the Bundy family to be successful as ranchers then they got busy shutting every ranch they could shut down, down in that entire, well, if, for his whole county that he lives in, he's the last rancher there. Now they're trying to shut him down. Then they show up with guns. What has happened to these agencies? We just went through tax time yesterday, and some of us still doing taxes. Hey, um, when you pick up the phone to talk to the government about your taxes, do they seem more interested in helping you through the problem or do you worry about the threats and the intimidation and do you see what I mean here? And then people call me the bad guy when I say I'm a little bit tired of all of this and I would like to go back to limited government, please. Because with limited government, we weren't being hassled like this. A person could actually do what they wanted to do with their own property. I even have a story here. Now, we, we can get into it maybe next uh, next hour if I, if I get into it. But for those of you in South Dakota, you know that there's a, um, if you're a rancher, there might be some bison running on your property. You know the whole deal with the Indian Reservation and, okay. You, there might be some bison running on your property. You might not be able to run as many cattle as you did before. We'll get into that if I have some time this afternoon. But again, what are we dealing with here? But government intimidation and bullying, which is why I go back to where I started this hour. Why are government agencies purchasing ammunition? Agencies that you would never think would ever own a gun. Why? Would the post office? Why would NOAA? Why would the agriculture department? Hey, those who have to work with the ag department or the FDA, how have they been lately? Have they been trying to help? I mean, the FDA has been trying to shut down people with raw milk and so on. Are they trying to help you? Are they actually interested that you make a decent living? That you can grow the family business? Are they trying to help you or are they trying to put you out of business? I think we've gone the wrong way here with these government agencies. It doesn't sound like those agencies that were set up to serve the people are doing much in the way of serving the people anymore. And so I have to wonder now why anyone gets angry with me when I turn and say, you know, what we need here is maybe just to limit the size of government. Hey, this is Fonzie on the line. You got about 30 seconds. What you got? Well, I got a couple of things here. Uh, one thing I think, one way to fix all the problems is make today election day, uh, the day after tax day. I think people will still be good and mad and, uh, right. and show up and vote. And, uh, and another thing, when you were talking about the uh, Department of Agriculture having uh, ammunition, um, makes you wonder if one way they're going to enforce this proposed EPA tax uh, yeah. bill for cow flatulence. Is, is that <laughs> Let me run to the break. I got to go. Thanks, Fonzie.
Hi, everybody. Welcome to Afterburner. I'm Bill Whittle. Well, as you probably know by now, Barack Obama's smart diplomacy, here visualized by former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton with the Russian Foreign Minister, hitting the reset button on a device that began this entire goat rodeo by mistranslating the Russian word for reset as overcharge. Smart diplomacy has grown a little tattered, maybe a little shabby over the years. That is until the Russian invasion of the Crimea, in which Russian will did to smart diplomacy what a Russian tank would do in a head-on collision with a smart car. Russia, of course, like all of her Potemkin villages, looks well made from the outside, but that military machine, which indeed looks formidable enough until tested in kinetic operations against a determined Western resistance, really doesn't throw the weight it used to. The Russian weapon being wielded by Vladimir Putin today is energy, the vast energy reserves that Russia holds and that Europe so desperately need. But not America. No, sir. Frack that. That weakness of ours, our insatiable appetite for oil that would have put us at the mercy of the Russians in the same way it put us at the mercy of the sheiks back during the Arab oil embargo of 1973 with its even odd license plate days and lines stretching for a mile or more in order to just fill your tank. Well, those days, quietly and uneventfully, have pretty much gone. America sits on reserves of oil and natural gas greater than anywhere else in the world, including Russia and the Middle East, perhaps even more energy than both of those hostage takers combined. And the smart diplomacy of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and now John Kerry, like their smart economic policies and their smart Obamacare rollout, didn't have a thing to do with it. They've done everything in their power to make sure that it never occurred. You know, as I write this, their party has just finished a congressional all-nighter talking about the evils of fracking and shale oil and all the rest. You know, one would have thought that if the atmosphere was indeed in danger of overheating, this expulsion of huge volumes of hot air would have been the last thing that we needed. No, my friends, energy is civilization. You don't have to carry water from a well or beat your laundry against a rock near your van down by the river. You have servants that do that for you. An army of silent, uncomplaining servants in the form of billions of electrons which are sent on their uncomplaining, untiring way at virtually the speed of light along coils of copper wires. These servants are at work right now, allowing you to hear this message. They never sleep, but they do need to be fed. Now, Back when we were smarter, we understood this. Back when we were smarter, in the space age years when I was a boy, we knew that energy was civilization. Back then, visionaries like the immortal Sid Mead, whose work you see here, knew that a clean, bright, shiny future was there for the taking in the form of nuclear power. He and others believed, and they were right, that the clumsy and primitive reactor designs of the 50s and 60s, which never killed a single person in worst case scenarios of Three Mile Island or Fukushima, and only did real damage in Russia, where they built a fire in a living room without a fireplace or a chimney. Well, those reactors would be replaced by smaller, cleaner, safer designs, and this has indeed happened. Only, we're not allowed to use them. In Sid Mead's future, our lost future, when progress meant moving forward instead of moving backward, as it does today. Energy was civilization, and there was so much energy, we simply didn't know what to do with it. So we produced wealth and prosperity and happiness, like we always have. But the power of that progress has been taken away, like so much else, by the power of the progressives. And we lie now upon a beach, supine and helpless and not striding the globe as before. We lie here upon underground reserves of gas made accessible by techniques such as fracking and instead of arising and using that cheap, clean energy as the muscle to build a better world, the American Colossus lies passively and obediently back as pygmies stake us into the sand with strings and threads. It's pathetic. It's disgusting. That's not progress. That's progressivism. You know, most of the manufacturing jobs that provided good wages to relatively uneducated workers fled America in the past several decades following the inexorable laws of economics, which as impervious as the laws of gravity, dictate that products will be manufactured where they can be made the least expensively. Now, for decades now, those ironclad laws have moved factories from America out into China and the third world, where their far lower labor costs provided a once unbeatable economic advantage. But today, we, the American Gulliver, have through our ingenuity and freedom tapped a resource so great that progressives must stay up all night speaking against it if they have any chance to survive. Because the price of a widget from a factory is not set by the cost of labor alone. 
Now the cost of raw materials, generally speaking, being about the same all over the world, the equation comes down to two variables, the cost of labor and the cost of energy. Factor in enough cheap energy, put those golden weights on the American side of the economic scale and the balance of manufacturing tips back in our direction. Our cheap and clean energy and expensive labor matches or even overbalances their cheap labor and expensive and dirty energy. Why don't we just ask Osama bin Laden, Osama Obama, uh, Obama, what the is? I've now been in 57 states. There's never been a day in the last four years I've been proud to be his vice president. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm proud of my country. You know, do me a favor. Could you say senator instead of ma'am? Yes. It's just a thing. I worked so hard to get that title. But resist, we must, we must, and we will much about that. As our nation honors its unbroken line of fallen heroes, and I see many of them in, in the audience here today. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. Speak softly and carry a big stick. I promise you, the president has a big stick. I promise you. If you're a free-thinking individual, You'll love this show. Irreverent, but honest and tastefully tacky somehow. Here comes another hour of insensitivity training with Glenn Woods. Second hour of the program underway. My name is Glenn Woods. Bold Republic is on the radio, and you can find the website for the radio show at boldrepublic.com. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. That's 307-363-4093. So I'm doing a little bit of show prep today, and I come across... A commercial for a candidate, Matt Rosendale. He's a Republican. He's in Montana. And we're going to talk to him in just a moment. But first, I want you to hear the commercial. Now, I've done a lot about drones in the state. In fact, drone legislation has even been offered up in Wyoming. And we talked to Wyoming Liberty Group about it. All right, here's the commercial. I'm Matt Rosendale, and this is how I'd look from a government drone. Well, I'm going to play that again. I'm sorry. And this is what I think about it. There we go. The federal government is too big and too powerful. More taxes and regulations put Montana families out of work. Spying on our citizens, that's just wrong. I'm Matt Rosendale, and I approve this message because I'm ready to stand tall for freedom and get Washington out of our lives. And on the phone with right now is Matt Rosendale. So you think maybe you're in trouble with anyone, Matt, because you shot drown down government property? Oh, maybe some liberals, Glenn. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> yeah. That was a pretty creative commercial. Did you guys actually uh, employ a drone to get that aerial shot of you? We um, we uh, had an actual flying device out there to get that aerial photo. We certainly did. Okay, now you're running for what office? And I think that's in Montana, right? That is, I'm running for the lone congressional seat we have here. Our our uh, current congressman, Steve Dane, has uh, decided to vacate that seat and make a run for the U.S. Senate seat. Okay, so wow, who's running against you? Anybody? Oh, we have several people. You know how us Republicans are. We yeah. have a rigorous uh, primary coming up here. But um, honestly, uh, the good news is that all of the viable candidates have served in the state Senate, as I have, mm -hmm. and they, uh, the beauty of it is we all have voting records. Right. And if folks look at those voting records, they're going to find that clearly I stand out mm -hmm. as the most consistent and effective advocate for gun rights, for property rights, for the sanctity of life, and right. for resource development. Okay, now let's talk about resource development for a moment, because here I am over in Gillette, Wyoming. So, of course, all of that energy runs right up through Montana. And, of course, here in Wyoming, we are fighting, for example, the BLM, the Interior Department, the EPA. How would you handle this if you were to land this job? I'll tell you, Glenn, that is one of the things that I've been focused on for quite some time. I've been working with a group called the American Lands Council, mm -hmm. and the first step we need to take is to have all of these federal public lands, not including parks, not including right. reservations, but Forest Service and BLM, those lands need to be turned over to their respective states 
as it was intended and is provided, quite frankly, by the Constitution so that the states can manage and control their own lands, opening up economic development opportunities through the private sector, uh, opening up a lot of these areas for recreationists so that they can access much easier, and, and really protecting the environment because I don't know uh, how you have, have uh, seen the uh, management of your lands, but in Montana, right. the uh, federal government has done a, a very poor job of managing these areas, and it, and it ends up being uh, a problem for raging fires, right. which damages our air quality through the late summer months. It damages our water quality. Right. So not even uh, the environmentalists can, with a, a straight face, say that the federal government is doing a good job there. I'm talking with Matt Rosendale, who's running what? House of Representatives out of the state of Montana is what you're running for, correct? The United States House of, House Representatives. of Representatives. Okay. And I did recently talk to the representative on the phone anyway. I got to get him on the program. Met him in person once, the representative from Utah, who's with the uh, lands... <laughs> Council trying to get states their land that was promised to them by the federal government. But let me ask you real quick, just so we don't have a situation like this in your state or down here in Wyoming or in the Dakotas. So I spent a good part of last week covering what was happening down at the Bundy Ranch, which, as far as I'm concerned, feeds right into land management and who owns the land, the state. Or does the federal government have control of the land? What's your position on what happened at the Bundy Ranch and handling agencies like the BLM or federal land for that much? The uh, big concern I have with what was going on down there was why in the world do we have have uh, the BLM and Forest Service um, um, employees armed? Uh, right. We have law enforcement around this nation, uh, the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, why we have Forest Service, why we have BLM employees that are armed and, and taking that type of action gives me very big concern. Okay, so what would we, what do we do about it in that case? Because the federal government, let's face it, has gotten too big for its britches, and it's very difficult for states with small populations like ours to rein them in. It is, and then what we have to do is make sure that we send representatives into Washington that, one, are going to honor uh, the Constitution and make sure that it is upheld, and two, have the ability to convince other people in other states to support the issues that we are trying to uh, advance. Uh, I believe that by showing the federal government loses money each year by managing or mismanaging the, the Forest Service and the BLM, that we're going to be able to gain not only that coalition of 10 western states that has so much uh, federal public land contained within their borders, but the other states that are losing the, uh, the benefit of the revenue that would be generated through the private sector and the taxes that their citizens are paying right now to support those areas, um, that we should be able to gather some support from some other uh, states as well. And then when you start looking around the nation and looking at the votes for the congressional delegation that is in Washington right now, you just you just look at the ones that, that have abided by their uh, constitutional obligation and, and are, are voting uh, by the, to uphold that, and, and we can get support from them as well because they will recognize that those lands should belong to the respective states as well. Okay, and I would suppose then you would be in favor of maybe passing or trying to pass some legislation on the federal level to make that happen? Absolutely. We, the process has begun so that the states are, are working on their respective legislation, and then we go back to Congress and, and we pass that, that uh, at the uh, federal level, we pass that legislation to have those lands turned back over. I'm talking with Matt Rosendale. He's in Montana right now. He's running for the U.S. House of Representatives. So give for those people I haven't heard of you yet, and we've, we cover in part the uh, bottom east of your state. So the southeast of the state of Montana. For those people who haven't heard of you yet, a little bit of your history, background, your resume, if you will. Uh, I uh, moved out to Montana uh, quite some time ago from Maryland, a little isolated portion of Maryland down on the Delmarva Peninsula. Right. I uh, started coming out here about 20 years ago, and, and now I have a ranch that is about 20 miles north of Glendive. So I'm very close to your service area. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the ranch is located right there on the Yellowstone River. Okay. And I live there with my, my wife, Jean. We've been married for 28 years. Oh, very good. Uh, political background at all? Have you held office? I had not until I served here in the uh, state legislature. I okay. was initially elected in 2010. Uh, my family had a a weekly newspaper when I was very young, mm -hmm. so I was always exposed to elected officials at the county, state, and federal level. Many discussions that we had around our dining room table involved um, the uh, elected officials that you know that were representing us at the time, and the ones that were doing a good job, and the ones that weren't doing such a good job. They were focused more on enriching their own lives instead of representing the citizens that had elected them. And much of those discussions well, I had to be held very confidential because my folks had the paper. So I, I was aware, I was exposed, and uh, by the time I was 20 years of age and, and started, I was engaged. I can't say that I fully participated because I didn't run for office, but I was certainly aware and, and engaged in the process. So I um, did just that. I, I, yeah. I would write my elected officials. And I would uh, write letters to the to the newspaper, and I discovered that you were you were received much better if you pro would propose a solution mm -hmm. once you once you formed a complaint. Right. That you know, that that way people actually could engage in a conversation with you, your elected official. So that's what I always tried to make sure that I did. But at that early age, I um I had a family to raise and a business to build. So I, I did not have the opportunity. I didn't feel it was the time to be running for office. I, those were my my primary responsibilities. Okay. And then um, as time goes by, my children went off to college in uh, North Dakota. Actually, all three of my sons attended uh, University of Mary there in Bismarck. And my time freed up, and, and the community came to me after I'd served as mm -hmm. president of the local ag association and president of the parish council. I'm, I'm very active in my church, and they encouraged me to run for state office. I'm talking with Matt Rosendale, who is in Montana running for the House of Representatives. Let me just throw a few issues at you. Let's see how sure. fast. Speaking of shooting down drones, you can shoot these suckers now. Internet sales tax. Oh, against. Uh, absolutely against. Okay. Uh, Obamacare, solution for it. Free market. Freedom. Right. My, yeah. my whole tour around the state has been freedom first. Right. Okay. Well, and so in other words, uh, limited government kind of guy. Oh, hey, here's a big one. Speaking of that, uh, gee, we, we're uh, cranking out our national debt like like nobody's business here. So ability to, let's say, shut down government agencies. Do you have a, any kind of plan or any idea of how you can just limit the size of government instead of growing it? I know yeah, you, you're, you're, you're going to hold one seat. You're not going to be president, but still. I think that that's one of the ways that I demonstrate my uh, difference between myself and my opponents. I served on finance and claims in, in the Senate and so helped construct the budget. And after right. my committee completed their work, I went back through and reviewed with the proverbial pen, line by line, mm -hmm. our budget and was able to find millions of dollars worth of reductions to state spending and, and more importantly, was able to convince other legislators to support those reductions so that that money could be taken out of the budget and was available as a tax relief for the citizens of Montana. Okay, here's a that, big one for that's me. That's what you have to do when, when, when you're working in a, in a legislative body. Well, here's a big one for me, and it's going to be a lot different than what you've been dealing with in Montana. So you're in the federal uh, – well, you're in the House of Representatives in D.C., and they drop a big, fat 1,500-page bill in front of you and tell you you got four hours to go through it and then decide how you're going to vote. What do you do? Yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. That's what the red button's for. That's uh, a big no. Yeah, good. My, my default is if, if, if they're not going to give us ample time to review a document, then the default has to be no. I spent every evening during our legislative session reviewing bills that were going to come before me on the floor or in committee so that I was prepared the following day to, to address them. All right. Hey, Matt, that was a great commercial. I enjoyed watching that. I'm going to go ahead and post that on my website so people can see it. Thank you so much, Glenn. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. No problem at all. Thank you for calling in. Matt Rosendale, he is up in Montana, and he is running 
for House of Representatives there. And I, I, I'll post that for you. Don't worry. I'll post that commercial for you so you can see. Well, here, I'll play it one more time because this is just hysterical. I'm Matt Rosendale, and this is how I look from a government drone. And this is what I think about it. The federal government is too big and too powerful. More taxes and regulations put Montana families out of work. Spying on our citizens, that's just wrong. I'm Matt Rosendale, and I approve this message because I'm ready to stand tall for freedom and get Washington out of our lives. I swear to you, he's going to get in trouble for destroying government property, even though he didn't. So, okay. Hey, speaking of which, the kind of rifle that he had there, watch this. If you ever get your own radio show, this is a professional segue. In the video, he's holding a really nice rifle, and you can get a rifle just like that from Rocky Mountain Discount Sports. See that, how that works there? And that, that's how you segue. And they got everything you need for camping, hunting, fishing, not just the gear, but the clothing as well. It's all their knives, guns, fishing tackle, you name it. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports. They got a location in Casper. They got a location here in Gillette, Wyoming as well, and other other locations around the region. Go check out their website. Whoa, don't just drive by, stop in. We're right here on your way home. And open seven days a week. Jack's Liquor and Bar. Happy hour, 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. for those late shift shift workers. And 6.30 to 8 p.m. for the rest of us day walkers. Domestic beers, $2. Bush, Old Milwaukee, and PBR. Just $1.75. Jack's Liquor and Bar. Your adult daycare center. While you're there, don't forget to enter their drawing every Friday for a free case of beer. Must be 21 or older to win. Jack's Liquor and Bar. Your adult daycare center. Rio 2. East 2nd Street, across from the Napa Auto Parts store. Jack's Liquor and Bar congratulates Al Sanders, who won a free case of beer just for entering to win. You could either spend 100 bucks getting your phone fixed, or you could go ahead and spend $400 to replace it. At Selectel Wireless and Gillette, we fix phones. Most generally, what breaks is the digitizer or the LCD. This is from being dropped, being smashed, thrown against the wall. No, seriously, nine times out of ten, people throw their phones. Well, we can fix that too. Save money. Fix it, don't replace it. Come see us at Selectel Wireless, next to Office Depot in Gillette, Wyoming. But if you do need a new phone, we have those too. It's springtime. Flowers blooming, birds singing. With daydreaming, son, it's time to get prepared. Time to get off your sofa and run yourself down to Surplus Unlimited in the Gun Trainers Building. Um, uh, One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Civilian soldier, they got everything you could need. That's right, the Surplus is unlimited. Surplus Unlimited. Camel for babies and adults. That's right, babies need camels too. Ten different styles of camel. Oh, don't you look pretty. Five fifty cord, numerous colors, wool blankets, boots, hats, gloves, coats, shirts, tactical vests and belts, camping supplies, high quality army cots, and that hard to find P38 can opener. Save time, save money. Surplus Unlimited in the Gun Traders building. 801 Carlisle on the Douglas Highway across from the fishing lake. Still at Wyoming. It's a luau and there is no need to travel. Join Holy Trinity Episcopal Church at their luau fundraising dinner Saturday, May 31st at Camplex Energy Hall. Dinner is served at 6 and the raffle drawing begins at 7. Ticket admits 2 and the grand prize drawing is $7,000. Second prize is $3,000 and third prize is $2,000. Only 400 tickets will be sold, so please call 682-4296 for details. Holy Trinity Episcopal Church serving the Gillette community since 1910. Where will Wyoming be by the year 2100? Are we building a future for our children or are we stealing it? Right now, government employees who expect a retirement check will find their pension fund broke in just 14 years. Wyoming's pension will go the way of pensions of Detroit and Illinois, which are already bankrupt. If we want Wyoming to still be a viable state at the next turn of the century, we can't let it go bankrupt. Wyoming needs to set the example and not saddle future generations with today's debt. Visit wyoming2100.com for a few ideas on how we can avoid spending traps that are bankrupting so many other states. wyoming2100.com, the long view, the right road. Don't have time to catch the entire show live? Log in to boldrepublic.com to hear or watch the show anytime you like on any device you have. Phone, tablet, tower, laptop, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google, YouTube, you name it. Glenn's jacked in in so many ways, he looks like Neo in the Matrix when he woke up in that pod. You know, you know, the goop and wires hanging and they flip. Well, anyway, you get the idea. I like that. 
far from it. Watch or listen to the show when you're able. Any way you like, boldrepublic.com. All right, five minutes in this segment here. Phone number 307-363-4093. That's 307-363-4093. So, uh, oh, I mentioned this before. I have to get back to it because this goes back to last hour in what Tim from Tampa was all upset about. And I have to, just for you, Tim, I'm going to bring this segment back. So here the BLM goes down to Clyde Bundy's land. And they had control of it for a week, right? So you would think within that week's time, well, I mean, you're talking Bureau of Land Management, they will come down on you with a hammer if you abuse, so will the EPA, the Interior Department, and so on. All right. And yet the destruction they did. Corey Hudson, friend of the Bundy family, said, would you trust somebody like that? Look at what they did. Who's the better steward of the land? Which is often the case. Was it what our last guest was just talking about that? Who takes better care of the land? And this is something oftentimes that I find is, okay, well, for example, here in Campbell County, Wyoming, we brought in at times environmentalists who seem to think that we are just destroying this area. They have seen doctored photographs of the power plants here, coal power plants, with yellow skies and black smoke rolling from... And yet when you get here, what do you see? White steam wafting out, clear blue skies. Yeah, but the ground is a mess because, okay, uh, let's, let's head down the train tracks here and take a good close look at what you see on either side of the train tracks. Do you see coal dust all over the place? Where's all of this coal dust pollution that the environmentalists keep talking about? Where is that? Let's head out to the ranches. That's not just talk energy. Let's head out to the ranches out here. What condition are the ranches in? We have to live here. We drink the water here. We have to breathe this air. We make our livelihood off the land. So when one of these big open pit mines is done, they close. I mean, I know back in the old days, it didn't used to think that way. But we've changed because we realize, hey, if we destroy the land we live on, we can't live here anymore. So what do we do instead? Instead, instead we reclaim. Anything we've had to use, we reclaim it. See, we have been good stewards of the land. And yet, as our last guest just pointed out, and as many of you who live out in this area know, we take better care of the land than the government would. Now, are, the, are there the occasional violators? There's always bad people. Well, the BLM and other law enforcement officials who backed down on Saturday, as you know, after hundreds of protesters, you all know that story. And it talks in the article here about the dispute as well. Well, on Friday in a conference call, the BLM officials told reporters that illegal structures on Bundy Ranch, water tanks, water lines, corrals had to be removed to restore the land to its natural state. Oh, you want to... The BLM would like to restore the land to the natural state. Hey, I just, I'm just going to toss this out as a suggestion, okay? Before the Bundys get out there and get rid of fencing and corrals and water tanks to restore the land, what if the BLM got out there and repaired the damage that they did in just the week that they had that little piece of land, those few acres? I know they pulled out in a hurry, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the damage they did long before they were pulled out. What if the BLM went back and restored the damage that it did? I'd be interested. I would love to see the Bundy family the, the hold another press conference and demand that the BLM return. And, you know, of course, they could hold a press conference. But who would report it? Well, you know, Fox News would report it. And shows like this would talk about it. But you're not going to hear that press conference on MSNBC or CNN or any of those other news organizations. Well, they barely even reported the whole Monday fiasco except to paint them as a bunch of, well, rednecks and yahoos. And you know the drill. You know how this works. Thank you.
and I am a sixth grade teacher from Wyoming. About a year ago, I signed up to do a Common Core training because that was the new thing that was starting in our school district. I attended that and I was on board and so excited to be part of it. Well, some of the things I was told that I needed to do to start teaching it to my students, I had used previously when I taught in another state. So I started researching those things and found that there was a movement against Common Core. So I started researching it and I found out that there was a lot of people that didn't like it. So I researched it to refute their claims because I originally believed that Common Core was great. However, the more I researched it, the more I realized I was actually losing in my voice as a teacher and my school board, my principal, those things that I moved to Wyoming to be part of, I would actually lose. You know, as a teacher, my voice was stifled. My administrator said not to talk to other teachers about it within the school. And if you're afraid of losing your job, I understand that. However, you need to be able to voice your opinion somewhere, somehow. So get together and have a real discussion about what you think is best for students. Do you really think that teaching the same thing across the nation is the same, or should we push for something better? My biggest concern is what we're implementing in our schools because of the standards and because of corporate America is getting involved with our education process and pushing a liberal agenda. In our school district, what has happened is that we've been handed curriculums that we're told we must teach, and in the process, we lose time that we can teach the things that we want to teach. There's so much, we're so curriculum-driven that we have left a lot of things out of our curriculum that children love. One of the things that I experienced this year was, I, this is my 10th year of teaching. For nine years, my kids loved math. This year we implemented Common Core, and by the middle of the year my kids were burned out because math was so difficult, and parents were frustrated with it too. States and citizens are waking up to the grim realities of Common Core. Four states, Texas, Alaska, Nebraska, and Virginia, rejected Common Core from the very beginning. Minnesota only accepted the English language arts standards. Common Core currently exists in 45 states, the District of Columbia, four territories, and the Department of Defense Education System. Participating states are in the final stages of aligning state standards with Common Core standards, preparing for full implementation by 2015. All students in Common Core states will take assessments based on Common Core standards during the 2014-2015 school year. Some states have already started piloting these assessments. However, grassroots activists in these states have been actively engaging their state legislatures, state boards of education, local school boards, and other groups to raise awareness about Common Core. In fact, FreedomWorks is currently working with activists in 29 states on efforts to stop Common Core, with more individuals and groups joining the fight every day. We have celebrated victories in states like Indiana, where activists successfully pushed for a pause to Common Core to provide time for more investigation before it was implemented in the classroom. Activists in Florida are currently working on a similar piece of legislation for the spring 2014 session. Another example is Michigan, where Governor Snyder recently signed a budget with an item to defund Common Core. The fight is far from over. Next generation science standards are also making their way into our classrooms and social study standards are under development. For more information on what you can do to join the fight against Common Core, be sure to watch the Take Action video, visit commoncorefails.com, and contact us directly here at Freedom Arts. Don't have time to catch the entire show live? Log in to boldrepublic.com to hear or watch the show anytime you like. On any device you have, phone, tablet, tower, laptop, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google, YouTube, you name it. Clubs jacked in in so many ways, he looks like Neo in the Matrix when he woke up in that pod. You know, you know, the goop and wires.
All right, back in we dive. Full Republic is on the radio. Phone number if you want to get in on the action, 307-363-4093. That's 307-363-4093. And pretty much everything I talk about and a whole lot more, you'll find it on my website, which is boldrepublic.com. I'm actually going to jump out of the country for just a minute, but it illustrates something that happens all over the world, not just in America. But, okay, let's go to Iran real quick. <clears throat> Iran considers a ban on van, uh, on vas, uh, vasectomies. I'm sorry, but they, okay. A ban on vasectomies. Why? Well, in Iran, apparently the birth rate is down. Oh, okay. So they're just going to ban vasectomies? That's what they're talking about here. Uh, wait, okay, let, let me ask you. I know we already know because this is Iran, but let me ask people who are supposed to be living in a free country. We now live in a free-ish country, not really a free country anymore, but uh, what business is it of the Iranian government, how many babies people do or don't have? And for that matter, if you ban vasectomies, people are just going to go to other forms of birth control unless they can, well, I don't know, find ways to keep people from getting condoms and things like that. Supreme Leader, <clears throat> got to watch out for names like that even in our country. The Supreme Leader in Iran says family planning policy as, um, well, Western lifestyle and so on. Well, no, it's holding back their population. They need to probably double their population, he says. Iran's parliament is seeking a ban on vasectomies and targeting of, uh, well, you know, again, buying any kind of contraceptives and so on. Two decades after Iran initiated an effective birth control program, including subsidies for male sterilization and so on, they're trying now the exact opposite of that. This goes also into countries like, well, let's go to China real quick here. Well, they're trying to do the opposite. They're trying to make sure that people don't have as many babies, which would include forced abortions and so on. Here's Iran saying, no, we're not going to let you get a vasectomy. We want you to have more babies. Once again, you have government around the globe trying to control the people rather than just letting people live their lives. Now, you expect that in China. You expect something like that from a country like Iran, where they simply just don't believe in individual choice individual lifestyle for that matter, where you get to make your own decisions. Here's the idea, and this is what's completely, no pun intended, foreign to them. It, here you are, a living, thinking human being. It's supposed to be your life, and you get to do with your life what you want to do with it. So if you want to get married and have a big family, do so. If you decide you're not going to have a big family, do so. Not up to you anymore if you live in a country that um, wants to control the people right down to the population. So let's get back to the shores of America then. All right, we haven't gotten to the birth control thing yet so much here in America, but could it come to our shores? I'm not trying to get tin-hatted conspiracy with you here, but let's uh, think of for a minute about, well, okay. We have in America these environmental extremists who would love to control the population. They think that the earth is overpopulated. It's not. We've talked about that on this program. We can talk about it again. They think the earth is overpopulated. Hey, a man at one point that was one of the president's czars talked about population control, forced population control. And that was a man that had the ear of the president of the United States talking about forced population control. Just so you know, these people do exist. Now, it's rare. It's rare to find a country that actually has freedom. It really is. There are those out there who want to control every aspect of your life. Used to be we lived in the freest country in the world. Now we're sort of free-ish. You even have to worry about things like well, let's talk about birth control for a minute, I guess, since we were talking about Iran and vasectomies. So here comes Sandra Fluke. Okay, now government is supposed to be buying people's birth control. Okay, and, and government is giving money to Planned Parenthood. So don't think that there aren't people who are 
considering America as a the next country that needs to take a look at its population and control it. Let's face it, they want to control everything else in your lives at this point. So uh, whether you do or don't have kids, there are people in this country in positions of power who would like to control that too. Okay, did you know that uh, one of the major causes of injury in America, there's so many causes of injury, rug burn. Absolutely correct. So many people go to the hospital needing all sorts of ointments because of rug burn. Don't let yourself become a victim of rug burn. Go to Carpet Express Direct because, yes, this is a commercial, okay? Just deal with it. Uh, yeah, they have um, anti-rug burn carpet or something there. No, they really don't, but I want you to go to Carpet Express Direct in Gillette, Wyoming. It's located next to Primary Restaurant, and I want you to go in and tell him that I told you to say that. And then call the show and tell me what the expression on his face was. Will you do that for me? Pool League, Dart League. Saturday night is ladies' night. Poker every Wednesday night. Domestic beers and drafts on sale. And special daily dollar shots. We even have a packaged liquor drive through and many other things for you. It's Lakeside Liquor, open Monday through Saturday. 6 a.m. till 2 a.m. Sunday, 11 till 11. Because you need to relax after where you've been. Work is hard for the ladies and gents. Come to Lakeside Liquor. Relax and vent. Oh, and by the way, Lakeside has tickets to the Bathers Ball on sale now for just $125. Lakeside Liquors across from Wyoming Work Warehouse in Gillette. I'm Professor Burke from Farmers Insurance, and this is 30 Seconds of Smart. So you want discounts on your home insurance. Upgrade your roof. Upgrade your plumbing. Get a burglar alarm. Get a fire alarm. Combine policies with your spouse. Bundle your coverage. Quit smoking. And, of course, talk to farmers, because the more you know about home insurance, the more you can save. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Get smarter about your insurance at Farmers.com. Stop by and see Lyle Austin, 201 West Lakeway Road in the Lakeway Professional Center, 686-5002. That's 686-5002. Great. It's Godfather's Pizza Delivery. Did you know we make our own dough fresh daily? Look at that. Pizza pie piled high. Wow. And Godfather's has so many pizza toppings and options. Sometimes I just don't know which ones to choose. If you can't decide, you can try our all-you-can-eat lunch buffet or evening buffet on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Besides a large variety of pizza, you get dessert, breadsticks, nachos, tacos, potatoes, soup, and complete salad bar. All of this for only $6.99. Stop in for a great buffet or call Godfather's for delivery. 686-7777. Godfather's Pizza, Gillette, Wyoming. Remember when the President of the United States promised this? If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor. Well, now you can. Honey, it's Dr. Phillips. What a surprise. Is this a social call? Well, sort of. More like a socialist call. Yes, now because of the intrusion of big government on the medical industry, you can have a doctor in the privacy of your own home. Well, I'm going to have to move in with you. That is, if you want to keep your health care provider. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yes, yeah, since you're going out of business, you can find out how to keep your own doctor in the privacy of your own home just by going to healthcare.gov. Oh, wait. That website's not working. Well, just look on a street corner for a doctor holding up a will medicate for a food sign. Invite him on home. I have nowhere else to go. Keep him in your guest room, your basement. Well, Chris is off to college. He can use that room. Absolutely not. Well, he can help me with my gout. Gout! I'm good at gout! Brought to you by the Obama administration, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. So where do you go to find an engine mechanic that can fix anything, no matter what it is? Big engines, small engines, foreign diesel? At Ideal Auto, no job is too big or too small. Open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Local specialists you can trust to solve your engine problems on time and on budget. Come see Johnny, Lynn, and the boys. Ideal Auto, open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. 2901 Dogwood Avenue, Gillette, Wyoming. 686-2259. Foreign, domestic, diesel. Proud supporters of our American troops. Ideal Auto. Yeah, we can fix that, too. This is a generic liner. Kind of boring, isn't it? Now back to Glenn Woods. <clears throat> okay. Oh, by the way, I have to mention this again, just because I'm real happy to hear it. For those who are in Casper on occasion, or you live in Casper, that means you're there on more than just an occasion... On May 19th, we'll pick up another affiliate station, which is KVOC 1230 AM in Casper. Uh, Going to be real happy to be on that station there. So we'll let you know more details as we get closer to that. So um, 
Let me let me ask you. That, by the way, I'm going to warn you in advance. For some of you, this is going to this topic is going to make your head explode. That's why I'm bringing it up as a topic, but I'm giving you advanced warning. Okay. All right. Western Washington University president is seeking to ensure student faculty is less white. Let me ask you. Does that sound like racism to you? Well, okay. Let's turn it around. Let's turn it around here. Because what he thinks he's doing is enlightened and the opposite of racist. But what I'm saying, what he's doing is what racism is. What if he had said that he wanted to make sure that the faculty and staff was more white at the university there in Washington State? But would have he would have lost his job. It would have made national news. He would have been called a conservative nutball, even though that's not what conservatism is. And then he would have been run out of his job. But instead, he says he wants to make sure we're less white, but that's not considered racism. I say it's exactly what racism is. According to Bruce Shepard, president of Western Washington University, university success is based not on its curriculum, but on the color of its student body and faculty. Now, that's not a quote. That's what I'm saying. In a school-wide questionnaire, the community was asked, how do we make sure that in future years we are not as white as we are today? That was the questionnaire that was sent out. Now, again, this sounds really racist to me. I mean, I read this and I was really uncomfortable with the whole thing. If I was at that university, I would want maybe to file suit against them. All right, well... As uh, one woman writing for Campus Reform Reports said in the questionnaire, which was asked uh, in the communications marketing department daily newsletter, Western Today, aims to help improve Western Washington's university adherence to its mission. As discussed by the president, what would be the mission in this case? In that speech, she discussed diversity. Ah, here we go. Access to education and the university's place in a global economy and describe the university as selective in its, well, okay. They're being selective. Students are more likely to come from upper middle class families uh, as other people have gone there as well. Quoting here in Washington, where we draw 90% of our students from high school graduating numbers, well, that's been, that's been declining and they are projected now to remain flat. Those flat lines causing a shift, and so maybe they're looking for new student bodies from new areas. Maybe diversity will draw in new customers. Is that what he's thinking? According to the university's president, the university's six critical questions, one of which asks how the university can become less white. Now, again, I would be, if I was at that university, I would be really defend, offended by that. Let's turn it around. What if you were to say, okay, we want to make sure that the university is less black. People would be offended by that. People should be offended by that. But it's okay to say that the university should be less white. How do you figure? That's like, to me, those people who said that they would vote for President Barack Obama because he's black. There are people who said that. Okay, well, I would call that person a racist. I have never voted for a president because of the color of his skin. I don't care what color he is. When I go to a university, I care about, if I were taking classes right now, I would care about the quality of the professors at the university. I would care about their quality, not the color of their skin. What was Martin Luther King said something about that? Oh yeah, very famous speech made by Martin Luther King that we judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. So here's where this university professor is thinking he's doing something that is not racist. Actually, he's done exactly the opposite.
Hi, I'm Dan Joseph. And I'm Eric Shiner, and we're here to talk about an issue impacting America. Every eight seconds, a conservative Republican gives in to the socialist demands of a fanatical Democrat due to a missing or weakened backbone. But now, there's hope. Now, there's a charity specifically dedicated to providing weak-willed Republicans with the strong backbones they need to stand up to liberal name-calling. Republican Spinal Funds, brace for the cure. We need your support. With it, we can help replace, repair, or reinforce the spines of Republicans who have lost their backbone and become unable to stand up for the principles of their constituents and platform. Your donations will also go to fund research that may sometime provide a cure for Republicans who've lost their spines. Promising new research suggests that Republican backbone deficiency may be caused by repeated overexposure to controversial issues which, over time, may actually liquefy a Republican's previously strong, healthy backbone. The Republican backbone deficiency does more than simply render its victims unable to stand up to unreasonable demands. Left untreated, it can lead to the diminished intestinal fortitude and loss of manhood. But you can help. Sign up to become a donor so that when you die, your backbone can live on in the body of a new Republican, benefiting future generations of America. And your donation won't just fund research. They'll also go to proven rehabilitation for Republicans with weak backbones so they'll be able to get back on their feet. Every month, we'll send you photos of a Republican your donations have helped. An update on his progress as he learns to walk, talk, and stand up again for conservative values. Join the brace for the cure now. And maybe, someday soon, a sniveling, hunchback, spineless Republican may straighten up and proudly say, I'm back. No, Glenn, it doesn't matter if you're part owner of the company. No cigars in the studio. Oh, what is that smell? Put your shoes back on. I don't want to smell that. Look, if you want good talent, you have to put up with some bad habits. Let's get back in there with the original bad habit boy, Glenn Woods. Seven minutes of this hour. My name is Glenn Woods. Radio program is Bold Republic, and so is the website, by the way. You can go ahead and log in anytime you want, boldrepublic.com. Just boldrepublic.com. There's my website. And, oh, oh, while you're there, besides the reading assignment page, the daily weirdness, there's special video shot, not just the show, but there's also archives of old shows. So um, if you decide that you didn't get to hear all of a show or you want to go back and check out old shows, just go to the archives page. You don't just necessarily have to watch the video. You can just download the radio show off of any device you have, phone, tablet, tower, whatever. And the, the audio does take up a lot less space if you want to do it that way. That's boldrepublic.com. For some of the radio stations out there, you're going to be breaking away. I mean, and there's still an hour left in the program. So if your radio station is breaking away, you suddenly hear something different, you want to continue listening to the last hour of the program, boldrepublic.com. You'll get to the front page and see exactly what to do to hear or watch the last hour. So sometimes when I put my website together, I like to put articles next to each other just because it makes a statement. Here's what I mean. First article, EPA says U.S. greenhouse gases fell. 10% between 2005 and 2012. All right. First off, we know part of the reason why is that so much industry has left America because of overtaxation and overregulation and other such problems. That's part of the reason. Part of the reason why is because, well, rules, regulations, and so on, because government is trying to put the coal and gas industry and so on out of business. In general, production output by the United States of America is down because our economy is not what it was 
back door. And you ready for this? This is going to drive liberals crazy. Darn the Bush years. All right. So let me read that again, and I'm going to read the next to it. EPA says U.S. greenhouse gases fell 10% between 2005 and 2012. All right. Now, next to that is a headline I put, East Coast could face brownouts. Wait a minute. Hold on a second now. We're, we're producing less greenhouse gases. And at the same time, lo and behold, we could begin facing brownouts around the country. Well, how the heck does that happen? How the heck? Do, oh, okay. Between the two. Well, that would be because as you put power plants out of business, you put power plants out of business it's not just the East Coast. The nation starts suffering from brownouts. Now, let me let me talk to those people who have an environmentalist mindset out there for just a bit. How do you like your cell phone? How do you like your iPad? Oh, by the way, you want to drive one of those electric cars? Too bad even with government subsidies, you can't afford it. But even if you could, understand you would be driving a coal-powered car because that's where the electricity comes from to power those vehicles. So how do you plan to keep warm in the wintertime? What are you going to do to cook your food if you continue to shut down all of these power plants? Oh, you're so happy, happy, happy because, you know, hey, uh, you reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Well, isn't that neat that you were able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? And congratulations, you've reached some of your goals. But in order to achieve your goals, what did you also achieve? One of the stories that I came across today Washington, D.C., in the recent cold snaps, there are people who had died because they did not have sufficient heat to keep their fa their houses warm because of some brownouts over on the East Coast. Wouldn't it be nice if they had enough electricity, but we can't do that in America because you guys have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We hear from environmentalists, the devastation that's coming because of climate change and how many millions of people are going to die because of climate change. How about how many millions of people are going to die because you've been shutting off the power plants? Do you know what caused the population of this planet, human race, to explode? Well, the reason that we had a growth in population is because we were able to provide ourselves with not just more agriculture, use of energy, but also air conditioning, heat. That way we could survive in the elements where we weren't able to survive in the elements before. So as you guys fight climate change, what do you end up doing? You cut off not just our agriculture, but agriculture for other nations because you don't want to use so much energy to produce food. And then you don't want to produce so much energy, which, again, your heat your air conditioning, your Starbucks. And so people are going to die. People are going to die because you guys are chasing that elusive CO2 boogeyman. And so your fight to save the planet, as you see it, is going to result in the death. You, you already have blood on your hands as you fight climate change around the world. You already have blood on your hands. You continue this, many more people will die so you can reduce CO2 emissions. By the way, we've talked about this before, CO2 is good for the planet. Well, you get a greener planet with more CO2 in the air. You guys just keep reducing it, and we'll go ahead and suffer through our brownouts and our blackouts, and we'll produce less food. I'm not worried about rising sea levels killing off people. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm worried about the loss of the power we need to feed and clothe. That's what I'm worried about.
This is Andrew Clavin on the culture. Liberals. It's time we had a little grown-up to liberal talk about the facts of life. Specifically, I'd like to answer a question that may have been on your minds recently. Where does money come from? Now, it's perfectly natural for someone at your pre-adolescent stage of development to ask this question. And even though it may be awkward to talk about, it's important you get the answer from a conservative or other adult. Otherwise, you might be told schoolyard lies. You're telling me we got to go spend money to keep from going bankrupt? The answer, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Or old wives' tales. Unemployment insurance, the economists tell us, return $2 for every dollar that is put out there for unemployment insurance. Or a lot of superstitious puritanical nonsense that'll only make you feel unnecessarily guilty. I mean, I, I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. You see, money is a lot like the birds and the bees. That is, it's a symbol for something else. What's it a symbol for? Well, let's say a bee wants to put his pollen in a flower. But unfortunately for the bee, the flower would rather have a flat screen TV. The bird has a flat screen TV, for some reason, but wants to trade it for a signed photograph of Mila Kunis. The squirrel has saved up a stack of Mila photos, because he's a squirrel, but he wants honey. The bee, who's really pissed off at this point, has the honey. Now, rather than going through an elaborate circle of barter that would limit the ways in which all the animals could have, you know, intercourse, the little creatures use money as a symbol of what someone wanted from them and what they want from someone else. That's right, money is a symbol for desire. Now, don't be embarrassed. Desire is perfectly natural. In fact, people naturally desire more and more. They even lust desperately after things that didn't exist at all a few short years ago, like iPhones or cholesterol medicine, or Mila Kunis for that matter, who of course is not for sale. That's why there can be more and more money for everyone who does something or makes something that other people desire. This desire, as you may know, comes out of a secret part of us we don't like to expose. So there's only one way to figure out what we desire and how much, and that's by offering things for sale and finding out what, if anything, people are willing to pay for them. We call that the free market because we can't find out what we desire if people fix the market prices or force us to buy one thing rather than another. Since everyone uses the market, we all chip in some money to the government to provide roads so we can get to market, soldiers and police to protect the market, and a few rules to make sure everyone at the market plays fair. But remember, your desire is very private and personal to you, so no one, even the government, has the right to touch it unless you want them to. They don't have the right to take it away from you and give it to someone else just because that's where they think it should go. I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. <laughs> they don't have a right to use it for things that they want, but you don't. High speed trains, universal health care, green jobs, cash for clunkers. And they don't have a right to tell you where you should put it, symbolically speaking. I'm glad we could have this little talk, and I hope you'll remember if ever someone from the government tries to put his hands on your money, run away as fast as you can and tell the nearest conservative. The conservative is your friend. My thanks to City Journal's wonderful Nicole Gelinas for helping me with this video. Read her book, After the Fall, Saving Capitalism from Wall Street and Washington. You might also want to read How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes by Peter D. Schiff and Andrew J. Schiff. This is Andrew Clavin on The Culture. Have you ever heard of the American Automation Association? Oh, probably not. We're a company that produces high quality automation systems, the kind that replace employees, thus saving corporations lots of money and increasing their personal profits. Now, no doubt you've seen some of our inventions every day. The self-serve automated checkout at the grocery store, thus saving money on checkout clerks. The self-serve gas pump, that was us too. No need for an attendant. The ATM machine at your local bank. Yep. 
that was us, and so many more gadgets that are behind the scenes that you may not even know about, like the automation machine at this very radio station that eliminates the need for a full-time employee to man the board. On behalf of the American Automation Association, we would like to thank the Democrat Party for pushing a minimum wage increase up to $15 an hour. Each time the minimum wage is increased, we at the AAA get more business from companies looking to get rid of their lower wage employees and replace them with automation. A $15 an hour minimum wage increase would be a boom for our business. Also, thanks for heaping piles of rules and regulations on local companies as well, and taxes and Obamacare. Thanks to socialism, business at American Automation is booming. Why don't we just ask Osama bin Laden, Osama Obama, uh, Obama, what the is? I've now been in 57 states. There's never been a day in the last four years I've been proud to be his vice president. For the first time in my adult lifetime, I'm proud of my country. You know, do me a favor. Could you say senator instead of ma'am? Yes. It's just a thing. I worked so hard to get that title. Lord, resist. We much. We must and we will much about that. Be As our nation honors its unbroken line of fallen heroes, and I see many of them in, in the audience here today. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. Speak softly and carry a big stick. I promise you, the president has a big stick. I promise you. If you're a free-thinking individual, You'll love this show. Irreverent, but honest and tastefully tacky somehow. Here comes another hour of insensitivity training with Glenn Woods. Last hour of the program. Now, that means if you want to change the subject, you can go ahead and change the subject all you want. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. That's 307-363-4093. As always... Pretty much everything I talk about, a whole lot more, you'll find it on my website, which is boldrepublic.com. So, okay, do you remember a guy uh, by the name of Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson? Okay, if you don't, this is the gentleman. I was so proud of him. He, he hit the national stage. He was already known before. I've uh, written a best-selling book and so on. What the heck happened with it? Okay, I'm just trying to straighten myself up. It's getting worse. All right, never mind. Don't look at the cameras. It's embarrassing. And so Dr. Ben Carson says he's gotten after, he got a critical phone call after that speech at the prayer breakfast. This is where President Obama was at a prayer breakfast. Dr. Ben Carson, who's got a book about his life out and so on, very well known in the medical community, was critical of the president. And he got a phone call after that. Apparently, he was supposed to apologize. Here's the story. Dr. Ben Carson became household name last year after he delivered a blistering critique of the Obama administration at the National Prayer Breakfast, all right there in front of the president, which is why we were so proud of him. Now he's revealing what happened. An excerpt from Carson's soon-to-be-published book, is now online at the Daily Caller if you want to see it. Quoting here, he did not appear to be hostile or angry, Carson writes to the president, but within a matter of minutes of the conclusion of the program, Mr. Carson says, I received a call from some of the prayer breakfast organizers saying the White House was upset that he was critical right there in front of the president and that I called the, the president and apologized for offending him. I said that I did not think he was offended, and I didn't think such a call was warranted. Furthermore, I'm going to throw in my own personal critique here. Mr. Carson's comment, Dr. Carson's comments were, I thought, uh, well, he was a criticizing Obamacare, used a good sense of humor, made some good points, illustrated some great points, with the president sitting right there, basically did what an American citizen is allowed to do, disagreed with the president of the United States right to the president's face. You're allowed to do that in this country. Now, if the president is offended by your remarks, he can grow up, suck it up, and deal. But we're dealing with sort of a narcissistic personality here who doesn't, he's not used to being criticized. He doesn't like being criticized. So, well, you should call the president and apologize to him. Hell, why? 
No, he shouldn't. Quoting again from the story here, I'm reading from the uh, Daily Caller. In fact, the excerpt goes on to say that the president even offered his hand to Carlson afterwards. Quote, many have commented that the president appeared to be uncomfortable during my speech. Uh, but I was not paying particular attention to him or his reactions as my comments were really directed more at the American people, Carson writes. At the conclusion of the program, the president approached me to shake my hand and thank me for my participation. And I'm betting, I'm betting that that's what the president was just doing in general because, well, that's what you do when you're a president. Whoever participated, you show up, you shake their hand. I really got to wonder. I mean, so many of us, I was one of them. I suppose many of you were as well. So many people patted Carson on the back and congratulated him. Here he was in front of the president of the United States, and he didn't feel, this is why I like this guy. This is what we need more of in this nation. He didn't feel intimidated. He just spoke his mind. Who cares if the president is sitting right next to him while he's speaking his mind? He wasn't rude. No, he wasn't rude, but he didn't pull any punches either. He just spoke his mind right in front of the president. And the president can either like it or not, take his advice or not. That's the free country that you live in where you're allowed to do that. And yet... Oh, no, you need to call the president. You need to apologize for that. How about not just no, but hell no. I've been asked to do it because I'm critical of certain politicians. And I know you're thinking, no, Glenn, not you. No, I criticize politicians, local, statewide, national. And I've been asked on more than one occasion to apologize to those people who I was criticizing. And I've always just said the same thing. I'm not going to do that. I wasn't rude. I just disagree with their policies. And I'm speaking my mind. And oh, yeah, I'm allowed to do that. So with the reaction of, well, you you offended them. Hey, you know what offends me? That that, that this idea that I'm not allowed to speak my mind in a free country. How is that for offensive? They, They never think of it that way, do they? They always think about who is offended... Well, for example, let's say that you, uh, you, you're, you're someone who wants to quiet somebody else from speaking their mind about their religion. You know, we, we've seen this. The Freedom From Religion Foundation. You cannot, you, you cannot stand up and uh, confess your faith at a high school graduation if you're speaking during the commencement because you might offend somebody in the room. Okay. Hey, uh, what about the other side of that? Isn't it offensive that that person's not allowed to speak out about their religion at that commencement address? See, what about the other side of that? It's offensive to me. Well, you can't put a cross up because you might offend somebody if you put a cross up on public land. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, gotcha. Hey, isn't it offensive to say that I can't? So where do we err? If you're going to make a mistake here, one way or the other, because you're going to offend somebody, there's the problem with living in a free country. Somebody's going to be offended. You're going to say things. You're going to do things that will offend other people. So where do you come down on this? The answer is you come down on the side of freedom. Dr. Ben Carson had every right to speak his mind in front of the president. To suggest that he can't is even more offensive, so put it aside. He's allowed to do that. Okay? I mean, I have people who are very liberal thinkers who tell me what they think all the time. And I never act offended. I might think that they're an idiot, but I never act offended at the idea that they said it. I may disagree with what they said, but they're allowed to say it. I might call them an idiot for their stupid beliefs, but I will never say that they are not allowed to speak their mind in any public form. That's one of the things I love about talk radio. You, know, you can call shows like this and you can speak your mind. Say what's on your mind. That's the idea of 
free. That's we, well, as a free nation, we should never be afraid of that. So let's just, for the fun of it, say whatever state you're listening to me in, you had a chance to speak to the governor today. Don't be afraid to speak your mind directly to the governor, no matter what it might be. Okay, no matter what it is, don't be rude, but don't apologize, and don't ask anybody else to apologize for their beliefs. Personally, I'm offended that Dr. Carson was asked to apologize. I kind of wonder about the people surrounding the president who act all offended, and for that matter, a narcissistic president who gets upset when people express their opinions around him. Or for that matter, you ever seen the expression on Obama's face when somebody's criticizing him to his face? It's almost like he gets a little bit of a tick in his eye. He just can't seem to handle it. Well, time to grow up. You're a free person in a free country. You're allowed to speak your mind in, and, and in, in front of the president, for that matter, or in a classroom. If you're a student in a public school, you can't wear that shirt. You might offend somebody. You can't wear that hat. You might offend somebody. Remember that kid who showed up for school with the American flag, waving, a big American flag, waving, waving off the back of his bicycle? No, you can't, you can't show up at school with that big flag waving like that. There are some people who might be offended. Well, they can get over it. Um, I'm allowed to do that in a free country. You can just get over it. Not aware, allowed to wear that big American flag t-shirt because there's people who might be offended by that. Oh, for that matter, let's get back to religious freedom. Kids in schools today walking around who have, believe, have certain religious beliefs, and let's say they're wearing a cross around the neck. Can't do that in a public school because there's people who might be from another religion or no religion who might be offended by that. You know what's even more offensive? Telling them they're not allowed to express their religious beliefs in school. Freedom, freedom of religion means that you're allowed to express your religious beliefs on public property. Not that you have to worry about offending people. You are allowed to express your beliefs no matter where you are. Now, you're not allowed to, I would say, we have to have some kind of decorum here. You shouldn't get in someone's face and try to offend them. But you have every right. That's why I get a kick out of some group shows up on a courthouse step somewhere and they're going to pray. And the city comes along and says, you can't do that, public property. No, they're allowed to do that because it's, they're allowed to do it there because it's public property. And the government's job is to protect that. See, they have it exactly backwards, don't they? By the way, wasn't the president of the United States, he was where? Where was he? At a prayer breakfast. <gasps> Separation of church and state or something like that. Think about it. Dr. Ben Carson was speaking at a prayer breakfast, and the guest of honor was the President of the United States. Shouldn't we be offended? Shouldn't somebody out there be offended because the President of the United States was at a prayer breakfast? I mean, whatever happens to separation of church, the answer is the President is allowed to show up to that if he wants to or is allowed to decline it if he wants to. I know he's president of the United States, but he has the right to or not to. Completely up to him. And for those who would be offended that the president went to a prayer breakfast, I would say get over it because he's allowed to do that. And whether the president was of a certain religious faith or no faith whatsoever, frankly, is none of our business. So Dr. Ben Carson, I still, I, and I, I got to give this guy credit for uh, not just saying what he said in front of the president. Again, he used a lot of class in criticizing the president. If you remember what he said, he was very classy about it. So in other words, don't be rude. But at the same time, don't hold back and never apologize for your opinion. Bold Republic. This is Bruce at Marshall Jewelry and Gillette. While working on radio ads today, gold was just over thirteen hundred an ounce. That makes your scrap gold worth more than you might think. We buy and sell gold coins and bars. We pay ninety-seven to ninety-eight percent a spot for most gold coins. 
We also buy and sell silver coins and bars. Some time back, a client bought a thousand ounce silver bar from us. At current silver prices, we're paying $12 for each dollar in U.S. silver minted before 1964. We're located in the Silver Auto Center next to Home Depot. Marshall Jewelry, where she'll love it, guaranteed. So this is the gun my husband gave me. Wow, that's really... Pink. Yeah. I know. Yeah, pink. See the snowmobile out there in my truck? Let me guess. He got a pink helmet to go with that. Yeah, pink. I mean, come on. I may be a girl, but I'm a Wyoming girl. Yeah, it's a really good thing you came to us. Don't like the way something is dressed up? Need it dressed up different for your business? J4F Signs and Stitches. They'll wrap your entire automobile, or maybe that helmet, that much snowmobile do it really cool with the right kind of sticker decals on it. They'll also do embroidery and signs and, uh, yeah, they'll even wrap that girly gun. J4F Signs and Stitches, 209 Stock Trail Avenue in Gillette, Wyoming. Call 307-217-2027. Yeah, and they can wrap your personal vehicle too. Car, boat, automobile, van, you name it. J4F Signs and Stitches can do it. When it comes to your insurance needs, Farmer Union Insurance can design an insurance program that is just right for you and your family. Offering preferred auto and SR22s, they also offer ATV and motorcycle insurance. Or if you are in need of homeowners or renters insurance, they can help you with that as well. For your insurance needs and the security and confidence of a local agent, see Betsy Jones at 1001 South Douglas Highway, Suite 184, or call 682-6520. So where do you go to find an engine mechanic that can fix anything, no matter what it is? Big engines, small engines, foreign diesel? At Ideal Auto, no job is too big or too small. Open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Local specialists you can trust to solve your engine problems on time and on budget. Come see Johnny, Lynn, and the boys. Ideal Auto, open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. 2901 Dogwood Avenue, Gillette, Wyoming. 686-2259. Foreign domestic diesel. Proud supporters of our American troops. Ideal Auto. Yeah, we can fix that too. It's the 18th annual Gillette Friends of the NRA fundraising banquet and auction. April 26th at Camplex Energy Hall, 5 p.m. Tickets, $40 for adults and $30 for kids 14 and under. Remember, last year they sold out early, so get your tickets early. There'll be dinner, a wall of guns, games, raffles, and auction. Door prize guns. Kids 14 and under draw for youth guns. Tickets available at Rocky Mountain Discount Sports, Forty Pond, Gun Traders, Gillette Pond gun tnt guns and ammo or online at friends of nra we'll see you there at the 18th annual gillette friends of the nra fundraising banquet and auction april 26th at five o'clock camplex energy hall need to let off a little steam yep that's why we installed phone lines into the studio call glenn now old republic is on the I air like here's glenn like woods the they look. i like the shiny steel and the polished wood I don't care if they're big or small, they're for sale, Bill, I want them all. I like guns, I like guns, I like guns. So, yeah, the next story is a gun story, but before I get on to the gun story here, I got to back up just a moment. So, Donna, <clears throat> who you know as our regular call screener, Nick DeLotte's on the phones right now, call screening, but uh, Donna's at home today, and she just sent me a photograph. So if you're watching on video right now, take a look at your screen. Here's what's happening at Donut's house right now. It's snowing out there. Okay. <clears throat> now, what is it? April 16th right now. And it's snowing. The big fat flakes coming down, right? I don't know about outside of the radio studios here. I just know this is what's happening right now. There, it's okay. They're a little bit west of where I'm living or where I'm working right now. Just a little bit west. So, okay, uh, once again, I would like just to say for the record, Al Gore, uh, you are a, you're an idiot. You're just an absolute idiot and global warming and all that good stuff. This wasn't supposed to be happening anymore. It wasn't, and yet, uh, well, there it is. So, okay, all right. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. I am very proud of a bunch of New York City gun owners and New York State. New York State gun owners the so-called assault weapons ban through the SAFE Act. Let's back up for a minute here and correct that. I, you know I got to do it every time. I can't let it go. I'll admit it. I can't let it go. The SAFE Act is exactly the opposite. This is where people have to register their guns. 
So it's exactly the opposite. It is nothing safe about it. That's one. Second, those are not assault weapons. They're rifles. But the people, the legislators of New York don't know the difference between the two because, like Al Gore, with all of this snow that we're having right now, they're, well, they're, they're just a bunch of idiots. So they're supposed to have registered their guns, their rifles, because of that so-called SAFE Act by April 15th. Well, they had, a, they had a deadline before that, but they didn't do it. So New York gave them another chance, just like Connecticut. Okay. Instead, what they did... On the deadline to register these guns, instead they showed up and burned their registration forms. Oh, oh I'm sorry, uh, shredded. They had a paper shredder. They went to Buffalo, and they set up a paper shredder outside of some government building, I guess maybe the Capitol building, whatever, and they just started shredding all of their registration forms and flat out saying, I am not going to re I'm not going to register my semi-automatic rifle. This is what is called civil disobedience. And they have every right, and I think for that matter, I'm going to go ahead and say they have a duty. They have a duty in this case, as far as I'm concerned. Quoting here, the SAFE Act redefines a rifle as an assault weapon as almost any semi-automatic weapon with a military-style feature, including telescoping stock, uh, long guns with a pistol grip, the ability to hold a uh, detachable magazine. So in other words, again, written by legislators who don't know anything about guns. That's what they call an assault weapon. Under the law, these rifles can no longer be bought or sold in New York Owners who do own them, well, they can be grandfathered in, but they have to register these guns. Quoting one gentleman here, I will not register my firearm whatsoever. This gentleman is speaking to a local television station, and I, I admire the fact that he's got the guts, and so did several others, just to get right there on television, look right smack into the camera and say, I'm not doing it, I'm not registering, ain't going to do it. And then they would turn and just go ahead and take the registration forms and drop it right into the paper shredder. Gun owners who chose to not obey the so-called SAFE Act registration requirement may be prosecuted on a misdemeanor charge. Further, gun owners may face a felony for illegal possession of what they're calling an assault weapon. According to Nick, by the way, it's snowing here too. Okay. So this is, look, there is, I'm not calling for violence, understand people. I'm not calling for violence. But there are times when we need an act of civil disobedience. There are times that we do need to turn to our government and say, I'm sorry, I don't care if you passed it as a law, and you can call me whatever you want, and you can cite me with whatever you want. I'm not complying with this. I'm not doing it. You're not allowed to have passed what you're passed what you have passed. You're not allowed to enforce this. This is unconstitutional. Don't tell me that I'm living as an outlaw or don't tell me that I'm doing something that's illegal. Let's talk about what's illegal here. What's illegal is gun registration as written by the state of New York. That's what's illegal. That's what's unconstitutional. Do you want to talk about committing an illegal act? What about the act of forcing citizens to register something? That's And by the way, somebody, I thought it was clever, somebody came up with a uh, what, what would be classified as an assault weapon. They took away everything on it, on the gun, on the rifle, to declassify it. So in other words, let's take an AR-15. We'll take off the pistol grip, okay? We'll take off the... Um, folding stock, and anything else. You can still have the exact same rifle. The barrel length is the same. They just added a different kind of stock to it. It kind of looks weird because it's really stripped down. It really is seriously stripped down. But it's the same exact gun. But because they took all the cosmetic features off, now it's a legal gun. These people are brilliant. Well, I like guns. I like the way they look. I like the shiny steel and the polished wood I don't care if they're big or small 
They're for sale. Bill, I want them all. I like guns. I like guns. I like guns. I really like 22 now. 45 lever with the Winchester tag. I like my double barrel. And it blows my mind. Now that you've been introduced to the basics of Common Core, it's time to expose where and who it came from. Back in 2007, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Eli Broad Foundation pledged $60 million to the development of uniform American standards. They targeted a pair of Washington, D.C. based organizations, the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School Officers, to develop and implement a political strategy creating these national standards. The NGA and the CCSSO have no official relationship with states or schools, so they partnered with Achieve Inc., another D.C.-based organization that began seeking common state standards back in 1998. Together, they wrote Benchmarking for Success. Benchmarking for Success is a common standards visioning document in which students are labeled human capital and the ideal education system would mimic successful global competitors such as China. This document repeatedly emphasizes human capital, collective influence, international benchmarks, aligned materials, monitoring, intervention, and global measurement of performance. Achieve then took the document and their political strategy to Secretary of Education Arne Duncan in 2009. Congress, meanwhile, earmarked $4.35 billion, that's billion with a B, to improve state standards and ensure academic success through the 2009 stimulus package, otherwise known as the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The same week that ARA was announced, Common Core was introduced to the states via Race to the Top Grants, a competitive system of federal funding awarded to states who meet specific requirements. The connection to special interest groups continued to strengthen as top executives from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in another backdoor deal were selected to take positions in the Department of Education one as Secretary Arne Duncan's Chief of Staff, and the other as the Chief Officer of the Office of Innovation and Improvement. On June 1, 2009, the standards were officially introduced, mimicking the Benchmarking for Success document with a few notable changes. Objectives were added addressing comprehensive data systems aimed at measuring students, internationally benchmarked assessments, and other invasive programs. In March of 2010, the federal government increased the pressure on cash-strapped states implement Common Core standards and the surrounding requirements by stating that states may not receive other federal formula funds if they have not fully implemented Common Core by 2015. At this time, the actual standards were not fully written, developed, or approved, yet states were handcuffed to implementing the program and unsuspecting school districts, parents, teachers, and students were in the dark about what was ahead. Experts reviewing the proposed curriculum refused to sign off on the standards, yet they were still passed along to the state and our children. In 2011, Achieve began working on the national next generation science standards and will soon begin developing social studies standards. Common Core's tentacles continue to expand even today. In May of 2013, President Obama introduced his Preschool for All initiative providing Race to the Top grants to states who are then required to accept expanded data collection, common standards, and a partnership with Health and Human Services for children as young as three years old. Hey friends, do you find yourself living in California and able to buy less and less of the basic fun and necessities of life? Well, now you can because of a new chain of stores opening up on the California border. It's Band in California. Yes, Band in California provides all the products that you're no longer allowed to buy inside the California border. Guys, have you been wanting to buy that new fur coat for the little lady? What about that massive, energy-guzzling, big-screen TV? You'll find it on sale now at Band in California. Serious lawnmowers that get the job done and big SUVs. And yes, to keep those little kitties happy, get them a Happy Meal with extra trans fat in the food court, of course. And feel free to walk around and smoke inside while the little lady goes to the tanning bed. Yes, Band in California, now located at every state location along the California border. Illegal immigrants on staff to show you how to speak back across the border with everything you've purchased. Come on.
on, don't act like you don't know how this works. Glenn sits in a padded room, talks to himself, and guess what? You are the voices in his head. It's really creepy, but it works. Let's get back in there. Glenn Woods is back on the air. It is the last half hour of the program. And for the record, yes, Nick, that is Hooker on the guitar there. 307-363-4093 is the phone number. Okay, this is going to cause your head to explode again. I am warning you in advance. You have a moment to sit down, calm down, do whatever you do to calm yourselves down before I tell you this next story, right? All right, so I want you to imagine, let's say you work at some fancy Dan place like Google. You know, Google, online, Google, okay. And you decide that you're hungry. So you're going to go get a snack or get lunch. Well, Google, since you're an employee there, has a cafeteria. You just walk into the cafeteria. You get what you want. It's yours. That's it. No, no, you have to pay for it. That's just part of what they do. They just feed you healthy food. There it is. It's a nice cafeteria, and it got some nice food. You just get food. Sounds good, right? All right. And they also have a gym and many a place where you can take a nap. And you might think, wow, I'd like to work at a place like that, boy. No, no. These people at Google are very productive. I mean, they really are productive people. So Google does what they can to help them out, to help them concentrate on their work and be very creative, including a gym where you can work out and think about your ideas. I do that before I get on the air, usually weather permitting. If it's not snowing in April, I walk around the building, you know, things like that. Uh, there's a place where I can go grab a little snack before I get on the air. These things, but I have to pay for stuff that I do. Google offers it for free. So what could be wrong with it? Why would your head explode? Oh, good. I haven't got to the other side of it. Ready? The other part. Of it. Here comes the, 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 the shoe dropping. Here we go. Ready? So the IRS has to get involved. Ah, oh, here we go. The IRS has to get involved. Well, that's a perk, you see now. If Google is offering free food, lunches, and snacks, then that's like part of payment, and the employees need to be taxed on that. No, the IRS is actually considering this. They get a free gym membership at Google, and so the IRS says, well, you know, a gym membership usually in this part of the country would cost this much, and so, therefore, uh, we need to add that in as one of the perks, and so they need to be taxed on that. The IRS has actually talked about this. Uh, uh, okay, now, when I read that and when I watched the video on this, news video on this, my head just about, I mean, I just about lost gray matter out of my ears. And it's not just Google. There are many businesses around the country who found it a good idea to offer things. And for that matter, why doesn't the IRS go after things like, does your business have a coffee pot? Do you have like a Monday morning meeting and somebody brings in donuts? I've worked at places like every single Friday, the boss would bring in some goodies for us to snack on. Not even as part of the meeting, just it's something the boss did just because he wanted to thank us for a nice, hard work week. And, and so Friday morning, you would walk up near the front uh, desk and there would be a whole spread of food. Some of it junk food, some of it healthy food, but he would just do a layout. That means the IRS would then come and add up or have us add up. How much would that be worth? And we have to claim it on our taxes. They might sit here thinking that I'm just jerking your chain on this one. No, you can actually find the story for this on my reading assignment page. Go to boldrepublic.com. The story's there on my reading assignment page. You can even watch the news video for this thing. They have to tax every little thing. They just can't leave. Because you get something, it has to be taxed. See, I was even surprised. Uh no, I didn't. Uh, don't panic. I didn't watch the program. I heard about it. But there was an episode of Oprah where apparently she gave away a bunch of cars to her uh, to her audience. Everybody in the audience got a car. All right. Okay. Well, and it was some deal. She didn't pay for it. 
It was some deal they made with the car manufacturer as a big publicity thing. Everybody in the Oprah audience gets a free car. Imagine the publicity. Okay. But in order to, well, the problem was that that's a gift and you have to claim that on your taxes, you see. So you have to get what was the price of the car. And these people have to, when they do their income taxes, I'll have to add that in. I got that car from Oprah. Thanks a lot, Oprah. I'm surprised you didn't itemize things like, was there gasoline in the car? How much was gasoline in the car? Because we'll have to tax that too. Every little thing has to be taxed. Every little thing has to be regulated. They just can't leave well enough alone. I have no idea. I have no idea if the IRS is actually going to go through with this rule change. But what's also offensive to me, also makes my head explode, is that people at the IRS actually have the power just to write these rules. Doesn't have to go through Congress. President doesn't have to sign off on it. Just a bunch of bureaucrats sitting at the IRS decide, well, Google employees getting free lunch, that's uh that's that that's worth something there. Oh well, we're gonna have to charge them for that too. Here at Don's Supermarket, we do all we can to make your grocery shopping experience perfect. We make sure that the third wheel on our shopping cart shelf is just so. Up aisle two is Luann with all the latest gossip. She knows everything that's going on around town and she can't wait to tell you. We hired a guy for the meat market named Sam. I mean, of course we did. Me? Sam? Come on. Our cashiers are the sweetest girls you've ever met. Fast at the register, and even faster when someone pulls up to the 10-item express line with 50 items. And on aisle three, there's the 300-pound man wearing a Batman costume. I'm Batman. Why? Well, I mean, why not? Add to that our fresh fruit, weekly specials on what your family likes to eat, and you get the best family-friendly shopping experience a grocery store can provide in prices you can afford. Don's Supermarket, 1501 West 2nd Street, Gillette, across from Value Villa. Hello, this is Jeremiah Clapper, pastor of Living Rock Church in Gillette. As you think about your plans and priorities for 2014, let me encourage you to consider your relationship with God. God says in Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. At Living Rock Church, we have many opportunities for you to seek and find God. Please join us for one of our two worship services, Sundays at 9 or 1045. You can also find us at livingrockgillette.com or call us at 307-670-1518. Howdy, folks. This is Swede from Swede Specialty here in Gillette, and I'm here today with Mr. Wimpy. Mr. Wimpy, have you ever tried a home-brewed beer? Oh, no. I only like Wimpy beer. Would you like to try a home-brewed beer, Mr. Wimpy? Well, okay, but just a sip. It looks kind of dark. Just close your eyes and try it. Well, Mr. Wimpy, what do you think of homebrew? Now, that's real beer, Pilgrim. So give Sweet a call, 307-686-0588, or go to SweetSpecialties.com. It's a luau, and there is no need to travel. Join Holy Trinity Episcopal Church at their luau fundraising dinner Saturday, May 31st at Camplex Energy Hall. Dinner is served at 6, and the raffle drawing begins at 7. Ticket admits 2, and the grand prize drawing is $7,000. Second prize is $3,000, and third prize is $2,000. Only 400 tickets will be sold, so please call 682 4296 for details. Holy Trinity Episcopal Church, serving the Gillette community since 1910. Spring planting season is now here. Far Speed and Ranch Supply has grass seeds. Low maintenance mix is a blend of rye and bluegrass and more. It's a mixture requiring less water and makes a very nice lawn. Fars also has the expensive lawn that is a blend of premium bluegrass that is for the showcase lawn. That lawn will need a little more water and care, but it's well worth it. Fars Feed and Ranch Supply, serving Campbell County for 37 years. Fars Feed and Ranch Supply, 100 South Burma Avenue, Gillette, Wyoming, 307. 307- Seven six eight two nine five zero one. Hey, Mort, yo, family. Hey, what's wrong with that human down there? Here goes another one. Well, that's spring fever, Stanley. Spring fever? All winter time long, humans are stuck inside. Gotta drive them crazy. So this time of year, they finally get to get out. They stop by Rocky Mountain Discount Sports and pick up everything they need to head out into the great outdoors. Tent stoves, backpacks, and hammocks. They even got shirts and pants, fishing supplies, and oh, hunting supplies. But what do humans do before there was Rocky Mountain Discount Sports? They were living in our 
our caves and wearing our ancestors as clothing. Oh, that's not good. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports has everything you need to shake off that spring fever. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports, 4706 South Douglas Highway in Gillette, Wyoming. Open Monday through Saturday, 8 to 9 o'clock. Sunday, 9 to 6. Rocky Mountain Discount Sports. Uh-oh. Stampede. Let's face it, advertising is hard and expensive. Very expensive. But not with us. You need to advertise. Powder River Letterbuck Trading Post is a new way of marketing in the Powder River area. Customers log into our website, letterbucktradingpost.com, and buy your products. We pay for the cost of marketing. We provide a signed coupon or gift certificate for the product or service, and we will send people into your store. We sell your products or services for you while at the same time sending and then pretend to customers your way. Each sale we make brings advertising credit for your business. Each sale gives you a credit towards advertising. Spend those credits wherever you want. Newspaper, Christian newspaper, magazine, syndicated radio show, or coming soon, local radio. Now you can afford to advertise. Find out more at letterbuttradingpost.com or stop by our office at 1001 South Douglas Highway, Suite B6, Gillette, Wyoming. You can also call us at 307 307- 670 8980. Look forward to hearing from you. L E T E R. BuckTradingPost.com. Yeah, I know, Mom, but they offered me more money to produce Glenn's show now that it's syndicated. Sure, I know. Stocking shelves at Walmart at 2 a.m. has a heck of a lot more prestige than. Whoa, hang on, Mom. Be right back. Let's get back in there. Here's Glenn Woods. Oh, come on, Mom. Stop crying. One more thing about the IRS. While I'm on the case of the IRS here, I was asked a while ago, a few days ago, remember the IRS was working with Social Security. Now, what was happening was people who were getting money through Social Security, let's say let's say your dad had died, your mom was getting his Social Security number or money, and then 30 years later after she was dead, Social Security decides that they overpaid her, and so you are going to have to pay that money back 30 years later. And so they're going to use the IRS to go after you by taking things away from, like, your tax refund, stuff like that. Okay, when that hit the newspapers, the Social Security Administration said, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. But it opened and Pandora's box. I was asked this question, and here's the answer from Watchdog.org. This opens up the possibility for the federal government to attempt to collect federal student loan debts from the children of deceased parents, according to an activist for student loan justice. We actually have to have a group out there called student loan justice? Really? Well, apparently we do. All right. So um, Watchdog reported that more than one trillion in federally backed student loans are outstanding. With compounding interest, there's little likelihood of repayment within that recipient's lifetime, recipient of the loan. So there's no legal precedent for the children inheriting the debts of the parents. But, well, this whole IRS Social Security thing has opened up that possibility. There again, and I've been asked that question by people before, what about something called precedence? And that's what this would be. It's something called precedence which is stupid, which should never happen. But because somebody did it once, this is what precedence is. Because somebody did it once and got away with it, therefore it's okay. Didn't matter if it's illegal, doesn't matter if it's unconstitutional, because a judge makes a stupid decision and gets away with it, that's called precedence. Therefore, all other judges are allowed to continue to make that stupid. You see what I mean? That's what precedence is. And yet they don't, they use it as an excuse. They don't stop and say, well, wait a minute now. That first judge was wrong. Oh, no, he set the president. See, it's an excuse. That's what precedence really is. It's just an excuse. So this, I was asked about this, and there's your answer. Certain legal experts are saying, yeah, it's opening up a possibility here that you and I, frankly, don't want to deal with. Last segment of the program, just ahead, hang in there.
Are you a bureaucrat? We would like to invite you to register for the Hometown International Bureaucratic Information and Justification Institute for the Bureau of Internal Symposium, or Heebie-Jeebies for short. Heebie-Jeebies invites you to this one or three-day symposium, depending if our three-day internal certification is renewed. We will have an exciting lineup plan. Health and Human Services Director Kathleen Sebelius, former IRS Manager Lois Lerner, and former Head of the EPA Lisa Jackson. Registration is easy. Ish. Just go to Hometown International Bureaucratic Information and Justification Institute for the Bureau of Internal Symposiums dot com and click register now. No, not now, but when you get there, click the word now, but not yet. You'll be directed to a site requesting you to fill out a small 12-page application. This application gives you the heebie-jeebies information and authorizes you to print off a short 37-page registration form. After your registration form is complete, please go back to the heebie-jeebies website and follow the same steps two more times. Since registration and triplicate is required and copies will not be accepted, please fill out one with a number two pen, two with a ballpoint pen, and three with a grant. Stale mail your application and registration along with your non-refundable check and money order. Each made out for $250 to heebie-jeebies. Credit cards are accepted, but please allow for additional 10 to 12 weeks for processing. You will then be promptly notified within 8 to 10 months if your non-refundable registration has been accepted. Don't delay. Get the heebie-jeebies today. Gas-powered, diesel-powered, but have you ever considered driving a coal-powered car? Yes, overpriced, heavily subsidized. Electric cars are available now. I'm sure they'll take all night to charge, and they don't get anywhere near the mileage a gas-powered vehicle gets. And those toxic batteries made from rare earth minerals? Well, but by driving an all-electric car, you're supporting one of America's most important industries. Coal. That's because coal is used to generate 49% of America's electricity. Petroleum and nuclear produce most of the rest. Hydroelectric only produces 7%. Those so-called renewable energies, which take more mining for rare earth minerals, leaves toxic chemicals as a byproduct and toxic batteries. And let's not forget those wind turbines killing about an estimated 500,000 birds a year in North America alone. Well, they only produce about 2% of America's energy. That's why we encourage you to start driving coal today. The coal is plentiful and cheap, and by driving a coal-powered car, you'll be helping to fight the Obama administration's war on coal. So go on, buy an electric car, support a great American industry, and drive coal. <clears throat> All right, I really hate to do this. Last segment of the program, last seven minutes-ish of the program. I didn't want to do this, but uh, for those people watching on video right now, I got no choice. Here we go. Tin hat time. Yes, I'm actually wearing the tin hat. I got no choice, and it's a horrible tin hat. It's really embarrassing to have to put this on, but I got no choice for a story like this. So grab your tin hat, put it on. Nick, you made a much better tin hat than one for your that sits in your man cave there than the one I have on right now, but I needed one. Is your home energy meter spying on you? Okay, utility companies across the U.S. are installing smart meters in customers' homes, touting the technology, energy-saving ways, but opponents argue that the meters are opening a Pandora's box to privacy concerns. Smart energy meters, meters read electrical, gas usage, enable power companies to collect Detail usage data on particular homes or buildings or whatever, but the readers also gather personal information that these people are saying are critical and intrusive. I wonder, because, you know, I was just telling you about the IRS just a little while ago going after people who are getting perks like free food and so on at work. Well, you might be using more electricity. This hat really does look stupid, doesn't it? All right. Well, it's a tin hat moment. On I go. The information gathered for smart meter includes unencrypted data that can, among other details, reveal when a homeowner is away from their residence for a long period of time. Electrical wattage readings can even decipher what type of activities you're engaging in. Watching TV, using your computer, how long someone spends cooking, or things like that. It's all in the nature of technology. Okay, but... Um, it's how the info is used is what they're talking about. This according to Alan Gilbert, executive director of Vermont branch of American Civil Liberties Union, tells Fox News, look at smartphones. No one can argue 
the benefits of having one, but on the other hand, it's a tracking device, isn't it? And they want to put things like this in your car as well. So, okay, wait a second. According to Nick out there, a woman walked by our office in the rain and snow. It's doing both in flip-flops while carrying tennis shoes. Just wow. Mm -hmm. Hey, Nick, you should have grown up where I did, where there's people walking down the beach like a fat old guy with a thong, you know, seriously, you know, like G-string thing happening, black socks and sandals. Nothing would gross you out or surprise you after that. Anyway, the group has suggested a proposal. The state government um, won't use the smart meter data. Look, look, they, look, okay, come on. If they have the data, do you think they're going to use the data? Okay, look, as soon as, here, here's my argument for this. I mean, I do think that there is something to be said for this. As soon as Google Earth came along, in New York State, they suddenly realized that, hey, we can now peer into people's backyards. Hey, guess who's growing a garden that they're not allowed to grow because, you know, that's illegal according to code enforcement. And guess who installed a swimming pool without getting a permit for a swimming pool? Which, by the way, I don't think you should ever have to get a permit for a swimming pool. It's your yard for Pete's sakes. But okay, they plug in a smart meter. We'll pass a law promising not to use all the data. Right. U.S. Department of Energy has even admitted that privacy data access is a concern for back in 2010, a report about smart meter technology Quoting here, advancements in smart grid technology could significantly increase the amount of potential available information in personal energy consumption. And again, what exactly it is you're doing in your home. The report recommends that the state should consider a condition in which some customers can authorize third-party access and so on. It wouldn't have to be authorized. Look, you have internet in your house, right? Remember that reporter that I told you guys about? sitting at home, oh, I'm sorry, in her bed sleeping. And she had been reporting on some things like Fast and Furious and other big stories like that. And she wakes up in the middle of the night to the sound of her computer turning on as she falls back to sleep. Later on, wakes up to the sound of her computer turning off, then finds out that someone was in there poking around for information. And guess what? They didn't have a warrant to do so. So your government might pass a law saying, we won't do that, yet they do it. So just like New York State is using Google Earth to see whether you're doing something illegal in your own backyard, even though it's your property, and they'll go ahead and turn on your own computer. They've done it without a warrant and poke around inside your computer just to see what you're up to. Now, that doesn't mean everybody out there listening to me should be paranoid for the j- just for the record. Most of you out there listening to me right now are off the government's radar screen. They've never heard of you. They may have your name and address somewhere, but they don't know who you are and they don't care. But if you do get involved with government activity, you know, you're, you're helping a political campaign. I don't know. You're a loudmouth, obnoxious talk show host, something like that. They might actually start poking into this kind of data. And yeah, they could even poke into your smart meter stuff. And by the way, in answer to Nick, but it's Wyoming. Uh, Nick, people from Wyoming can be like, you know, crazy. Uh, in many cases, that's why people moved to Wyoming because. We have our own special brand of crazy out here. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, Nick. Okay, what you saw out there is a special Wyoming crazy. Feel good about it. It's a certain type of a freedom that we're allowed to express out here. Okay? Okay. That's it for today, folks. We'll do it all again tomorrow, which will be a Thursday, and hopefully it won't be snowing. 